Gossip at the Corpse Cart contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello and welcome back to Gossip at the Corpse Cart time. Woo! Uh, I'm Lucy. I am Amanda. And if this is your first time joining us, this is where we get out all the shit that we didn't have room for in a regular episode. That like you probably sent the us. The worst things that you've ever done. Mm-hmm. Some weird headlines, some good obituaries, mm-hmm. a tall tale from Texas. We'll get to it. Oh, Lord. Well, before we do, we are joined today by a very special guest who... To be perfectly honest, this is the second time we've started recording this because there may have been some tech issues, but this is the magic of editing. <laughs> and in the first introduction, Keep behind the curtain. In the first introduction, I had nothing but glowing, beautiful accolades to say about this person. And I still do. But, but now, since then, I've gotten high and I can't remember everything that I said <laughs> yeah. the first time around. So this might not be perfect. But I will say, this is the one, the only, the incomparable, the consummate professional, the where my dog's at man expert. The mother of dragons. The mother of dragons. Khaleesi mother of dragons of (laughs) man crimes episode fame. Alvin Williams of Affirmative Murder Podcast. Welcome to the stage, Alvin. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you guys for having me again. And I want to say that I apologize to people listening because you'll never hear the original take of what this show was when it started. We laughed, we cried. Sucks to be you. Yeah. It was a special moment. We did cry. And that's okay, you know, it, we, we, we get to live with it. And mm-hmm, sometimes that's mm-hmm. more than enough. But I'm excited to be back. I'm here. <laughs> For anybody who didn't listen to the episode that I was on, the whole man expert thing is a joke. I'm not a red pill. A, a what? I'm not a... <laughs> Wait. That was a... I was, guys, I was doing a... I was pranking you guys. I am <laughs> Where not, my dog's at? I am <laughs> not like that guy. Wait, that was but you a talked character. for like... You talked for like two hours really yeah, passionately about, about character men's work. rights. I was doing like... I was doing character work. <laughs> I'm like Jiminy Glick. I was I was doing a character work. I'm like I'm like Martin Short. That was that was I was doing. I was doing just a bit. I'm a very um, loving and and caring person who thinks that women should take the lead. In, women in love the me, and I'm just excited Listen, to be here. I know several women. My best friend's a woman. My best, my best friend's a woman. <laughs> my mom's a woman. I women are great. I think women are great, and that was a bit I was doing. <laughs> Have you committed any crimes as a man since we last spoke with you? Never, don't never, even. not even, never have done We're that. We're not once gonna. In life. We would never snitch. Listen, oh, is I this famously. What you, is, oh, you guys set me up. This is a trick. Is this no, what you guys did? Because the no. mics alive. You guys trying to no. catch me? This is entrapment. I famously hate women, so you're in great company. Like, <laughs> famously Let it hate out. women. We they, actually have a fourth guest, Joe Rogan. Come on out. They do be. They do be hogging them sheets. What the fuck would y'all even do if, if we the were JRE like, stepped into the if just, he just came on a the screen show. comes up in the middle? JRE. <laughs> <laughs> I anyway. the jump scare of the century would be welcoming <laughs> Joe Rogan to the stage right now. That'd be hey, fucking Joe, awesome. Can we have a million dollars of your Spotify deal, please? <laughs> yeah, he, 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 if he did come into this chat, it would be very dramatic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be. be. Shit would get weird. Ominous but anyway, music. Don't worry, Joe Rogan is not here. <laughs> We're not doing that to you. What we are doing to you today is forcing you to cold read some coven confessions. This is true. And uh, that's I'm here, punishment I'm excited. enough. I've, I've heard how nuts these get. They get really nuts. They're so inappropriate. And you guys kept me in the dark, which I respect. You guys mm-hmm. kept me in the dark, which I very much respect. And so I'm, 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 I'm just ready. I'm just ready to. I'm just ready to follow the lead and let the women do the work. That, that, <laughs> there it is. 
Where my dog's at. Could you yeah. hear the sound of Alvin patting himself on the back? That's what that was. <laughs> and I join him. And I fucking love it. Okay. <laughs> I'm dying. <sighs> All right. What are we do? What are we doing next? Headlines. Well, let's let's move right at, on ahead to some crazy headlines from Amanda that were probably sent in from you listeners. They were definitely sent in from you listeners. And this first one, it might be the best thing. Honestly, this might be my best batch. Like for me personally. Is there a theme? The theme I would say is whimsy and mm. excitement. Yes, Ooh. Mr. Megorium. Yeah, the <gasps> Wonder Emporium. We'll get into the Wonder Emporium, by the way. Oh. But for this first one, the only is it reason in Glasgow, I, <laughs> maybe the only reason I picked this is for the photos. So I am going to encourage you, Alvin and Lucy, to go to the drive in the A Picks folder and find the shrubbery. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 oh wow oh i did i was on twitter this day i'm sorry x yeah there's balls yeah, yeah this was a day this was a day we'll wow. get to the balls <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the headline from the oregonian reads this oregon shrub is nsfw Stops traffic in Portland suburb. <laughs> My suburban neighborhood is home to a 12-foot-tall arborative shaped like a circumcised penis. <laughs> well, Frankly, if it's erect, don't they look the same? Eh, yeah. I, yes. Alvin, would, would you Alvin? like... If, if you've seen one, Man. you've seen them all. <laughs> I tell you what, my Roman Empire is men's penises, am I right? Wait. <laughs> No, that's Hard I use that saying. phrase wrong. Yeah, I use that phrase wrong. <laughs> Amanda, continue. I got you, buddy. <laughs> Frankly, I think I just had to think about penises all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't we all? But. We got, yeah, I mean, who doesn't? It's in, it, it's I think inundated. I just am said I right? I think about penises all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it would be. I feel like it would be hard not to if you you think about what you got. Like the amount of wasted hours I think about my vulva. True. Yeah. And, uh, so the, many. The phallic shape is just everywhere. Chair legs, it's bananas, everywhere. you know, Disney everywhere. movies. <laughs> Shrubs, you can't barely. And this shrubbery. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, it's the most exciting thing to happen in Tualatin. Twal- Tualatin. Yeah. Since like the Beatles spent the night at the old Sweet Briar Inn. The impressive <laughs> arborative, a.k.a. the Chub Shrub, <laughs> it's the brainchild of Lynn Stanick, a business hey, owner. brainchild. Who yeah. has hey, lived in Tualatin, a Portland suburb, for 24 years. Stanick said she amused herself for at least 20 years by daydreaming about shaping her front yard shrub into a phallic <laughs> daydreaming. form. Daydreaming. <laughs> for 20 Adidas. years. This shrub All is day two I dream old? about dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Can we talk be- about the one with the Christmas lights on it? It looks infected. We'll get to the seasonal <laughs> outfit changes. <laughs> That's crazy. <Jesus. laughs> so she dreamed about it for 20 years, and then the dream became a reality on August 8th, 2021. Quote, <laughs> I was out there trimming the thing with a 24-inch bar on my hedger, thinking, I'm 90% of the way there. Why not today, Stanick said. <laughs> Before going full-on chub shrub, Stanick polled her neighbors to see how they felt about having a penis tree pop up in their cul-de-sac. Stanick's immediate neighbors, Anthony and Natalie Ballas, thought it was a fine idea. <laughs> Stanick said the other neighbors seemed to think she was kidding. This is this is Amanda coded so fucking hard. Yeah. Like when I moved into my uh my house with Bill, he for some unknown reason was totally down with me doing like the holiday decorating. Sure. Oh my and God. not having any say in it. And so <laughs> I texted my neighbors three different options of what holiday inflatables they would be okay with staring at out their windows all the time. Oh my and God. And the options were like humping deer. I think maybe a Santa with a boner or like mooning, maybe. I don't think it was a boner. I think it was mooning or um, the camper van from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation that just shitters, shitters full. full on it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I 
I respected the results of the election. Thank yeah. you. Which were none of the above. Thank you. Which we're were shitters full. <laughs> <laughs> and now the shitters full inflatable is famous in my neighborhood. Well, those anyway, are so I respect this neighbor. Yeah, I mean, based on our relationship and the things that you've sent me in the past, I was picturing your Christmas decoration Wait, being worse. like the the kid, the the next door neighbor from the Toy Story movie, where it's just like a yeah, doll Sid. baby head on Sid. a spider's <laughs> body and just uh, yeah, I yeah. Send, yeah, I baby send doll Alvin. legs hanging from strings. Animatronics. They yeah, move. I, just, <laughs> I send Alvin Furby odd body photos, like not infrequently <laughs> and without warning. Yeah. Yeah. Because Nightmare. he loves them so much. They're great. Hmm. I think you sent me one of those Alvin, made out of hot dogs one time. Oh, I for sure if you did. Stop and the responding, beans one. Sh- she'll eventually stop. Oh, he did. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know what to say. I was like, yeah. Well, <laughs> this is haunting my dream. <laughs> this is our friendship. <laughs> I see it, and it's like I, I will never unsee it. And so I, have res- I respect and appreciate that. Sending things to my friends that they will never unsee is my love language. Like, yeah. absolutely in a nutshell. I do this to our group Great. chat all the time. Lucy, get a test. I send some of the most yeah. unhinged shit. Anyway. <laughs> so other neighbors thought she was kidding. And then we're like, oh, shit. But she says, still, nobody threw themselves in front of my trimmer. So I proceeded with my arboreal bris. <laughs> at this point you may be asking yourself why stanick said that with a global pandemic raging and american politics and upheaval she was fed up with almost everything claiming the carefully sculpted abor abor of i hate mm-hmm. this arborvitae Ac- arborvitae is that the accurately- type of tree that it is yeah it's one of those tall narrow there's usually a bunch in a row mm-hmm. as, yeah, like like, a, as like as like a, a bo- like a yeah, they're like pointed. They're like skinny, pointy pine mm. tr- pine trees almost. They're already phallic. Yeah, mm-hmm. she just didn't have to circumcise it so intensely. <laughs> she really did. She got to it. So she said, claiming the carefully sculpted arborvitae accurately captured her feelings at the time. She said, "I finally just went with it, meaning I finally lost it and turned my shrub <laughs> into a giant cock." Didn't we all? When I first <laughs> I spotted it. the provocative shrub, I wasn't sure if it was an inter- intentional act. Then Stanek gave it a Halloween costume. It was hard to miss the intentionality in a penis-shaped bush covered in yards of white polyester cobweb fabric. (laughs) The new neighborhood attraction was now encased in a condom. You never want cobwebs on your dick. (laughs) No, you don't. When Christmas rolled around, Stanek woke up one morning to find a white garland draped over her provocatively trimmed arborvitae. That was followed by someone covering Stanek's creation with little red balls. So that's your infection. The red yes. bumps. Oh. They're red? Oh, I thought those were lights. Yeah. There's l- red lights and I think uh, ornaments on it. Oh, Jesus. It looks... It's a, it, it, it inflamed. makes me nauseous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it is, um, doesn't look right. That ain't right. <laughs> yeah. That's when I decided I needed to control the narrative, Stanek said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking losing it. After Stanek added lights, the Yuletide bush began receiving even more attention. People showed up at her door with decorations and gifts, including maple bars with strategically placed donut holes. <laughs> the shrub even began receiving Christmas cards. When two Aww. carloads of people showed up one night to sing their bawdy version of Oh Christmas Tree to her, to her arborvitae, Stanek knew it was becoming a big thing. Yeah, this is getting culty, since, huh? Yeah. Since people the caroling episode. Well, I call like it the, legendary, not culty. I, I don't know, because I saw, I, I watched, I think it was two weeks ago, last week tonight with John Oliver, which is like one of my favorite shows, and he had a segment about the rat hole in Chicago where th- do you know what the rat hole is? No. Yes. Okay, Lucy, of course, knows because uh, it's an internet sensation. But in Chicago, there's a sidewalk that was paved over that clearly a rat like either fell in it while it was wet or they accidentally paved over like a dead rat. <laughs> but it left the shape of like a splayed, like spread eagle per- rat. Perfectly, obviously rat. It had like the toes and everything. Everything. And it was like deep enough that it was technically like a legitimate pothole in the shape of a rat. And it oh, became wow. known as the rat hole. 
And then people got so obsessed with it, they'd go. It ended up on like Atlas Obscura. People like left coins on it, yeah. like a little oh, yeah. Irish memorial. And, and yeah, yeah. Like flowers <laughs> offerings. And yeah. <laughs> it's so fucking amazing that um, a couple got married at the rat hole. They were like, we couldn't pick a venue. And we both just thought, wouldn't it be funny if we got married at the rat hole? And I was yeah. like, this is the best shit I've ever fucking seen in my life. Oh, God. Anyway, so this is, it's like that. Mm-hmm. What if we kissed at the rat hole? What yeah. if there are memes that say that? <laughs> what would you do if I kissed what at the rat hole? What if we kissed at the rat hole? <laughs> what if we kissed at the at the Portland Chub Shrub? <laughs> oh, what if? So she controls the narrative now. Since the caroling episode, Stanek hasn't missed a holiday when it comes to dressing up her chub shrub. There is no downtime either, as between holidays, Stanek now decorates to honor international days to promote bad puns, such as penis colada my favorite was <laughs> world vasectomy day when the naughty arborvitae was adorned with a giant pair of scissors and a thoughtfully placed bag of frozen peas Aww. Stanek reports that one woman stopped to let her know the display had motivated her foot dragon husband to go get snipped <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a public servant it's a PSA yeah, yeah okay this goes on for a really long time but long story short she's a kooky white lady in the Cleveland suburbs who was like mad kooky white lady <laughs> about the, mad about the world and turned her shrubbery into a penis that she decorates for holidays well even kooky suburban white ladies well, I'll tell you what this lady knows her way around a coronal ridge am I right <laughs> <laughs> the detail is you are. you're right yeah yeah the, the attention I wonder if she has that detail. little whoop there's like that it, little lit, that little whoop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The oh, gutter. Yeah, yeah she's got it on tech- there. The, I can see the gutter. it. gutter. <laughs> you know the vibes. <laughs> I, can see, I can see the vibes of it. Yeah, she's yeah. on Knowing she's what on I she's know about why she's that thing it. exists, it's literally a gutter. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Okay. <laughs> More like now a shovel. I'm, yeah, it's a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> a scoop. <Okay. laughs> a hoe, if you will. <laughs> a back hole. <laughs> okay uh next up on the docket i really picked this because you know i cold read these i just go from like i open it i look at the headline and if the picture grabs my attention i'm like fuck it we'll do it live i'm in and then i Love don't it. read the rest so mm-hmm. i opened this and saw the photo that goes with it and i was like even if this is boring as shit i have to pick it because i have to know what happens and i'm not gonna read it now <sighs> So I don't know what's to come, but I hope this article explains the science here, like the physics, because I have no clue how this person's car ended up in this position. And there is a picture of the car on the drive that'll be on the blog so that you can see what the fuck I'm talking about, because it's shocking. And it doesn't even look damaged. Oh, you know what? I'm starting to understand. I'm starting to understand. Whoa. If you look to the right, you see that little yellow like pole, parking pole. Yes. Sorry, the left. That's the left. on the left. Yes. I'm sorry. I'm very high. The left. I think she drove up on that and her wheel, her tire made it like all the way up there and then the car fell. She went well, full just diesel. Just read the article and maybe we can piece it I'm, together. That's my prediction. Oh, okay. I'm so with this you on says, the prediction too. Thank you. Uh, the, the headline reads, not what they meant by a tip, car flips on side in Duncan drive through <laughs> the sub headline reads the real question is did they get their coffee yeah this is obviously in the east coast because it's dunkin donuts and they've deprived us of that here in the midwest are you serious yeah we have like one in the whole state makes me do they really have it sad. on the west coast i'm not sure america actually. runs on dunkin on dunkin but i guess the, the east coast not, runs on dunkin yeah, yeah. Fuel. The Midwest runs on caribou. Midwest runs on caribou. <laughs> a woman took tipping a little too seriously Wednesday morning when her car ended up on its left side at a Duncan drive-thru in Londonbury, New Hampshire. Quote, life happens, but coffee helps. Londonbury <laughs> Police Department wrote in a post on its Facebook page Wednesday. I... Yeah, I know you love puns, but when the cops are trying to be cute on Facebook, it makes me want to <laughs> shit down someone's fucking throat. I hate it so much. I do. There too. was an accident. Stop making jokes. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Police said no one was injured in the accident. Two which fatalities. Happened. Two. Because <laughs> they didn't get their the entire Dunkin' on time. Donuts exploded. 
<laughs> and they're like, talk about extra crip- crispy donuts. Anyway. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no. Let's talk about a dark roast. Yeah. The whole place exploded. <laughs> oh, my God. Police said there was no one injured in the accident, which happened at a Dunkin' drive through in the parking lot of an all-town gas station. The accident happened around 7.30 a.m. when the car hit a pole by a curb, the police told the, pl- the Boston Globe. The 30-year-old driver of the car, a woman from Londonbury, was able to get out of her vehicle through the sunroof. Oh, my God. Poor thing. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yikes. That's <laughs> trauma. People took to the comments of the police department's Facebook to post jokes about the incident. Of course, it was a woman driver. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Quote, everyone hey, at the dunks line must have been mad, a commenter am, said. Am I right, Alvin? Don't, don't bring it out of me, guys. Well, you know, you know, Alvin? I'm trying, I'm trying, Alvin? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I want to see the comments, but I don't want to, like, give the Londonbury w- <laughs> Police Department, like, clicks for the algorithm <laughs> so i'm just not going to because like i will say the car fuck though. those guys <laughs> the car is like those it's pe- brand, it looks it's brand not new very it's damaged. got the dealer plate this car looks it literally looks like she drove it off the lot what well, what if she was on a test drive <laughs> she's got dealer <laughs> plates oh dipped she literally has dealer plates this is I like that you can't see the top or the windshield or anything it just looks like <laughs> It's so flat. flat. Of yes, yeah. This it's is got nuts. no windshield. It's so weird. <laughs> it I looks I, really weird looking. It's very scary. But anyway, I also feel I feel bad. I feel bad for you guys though, because you'll never know the combination gas station Dunkin' Donuts donut. It oh, hits the best. It hits different. I do Didn't know you? because I have so much family on the East Coast that I get to experience Dunkin' myself. Yeah. But I'll never know because I don't drink coffee anyway. Oh, they have so much more than coffee. Yeah, they have empanadas now. Uh, <laughs> they do it I all. love empanadas. <laughs> yeah, Yum. they have a French crawler. It's pretty fire. They um, do it all. Dunkin' Donuts is amazing. But again, any gas station combination place, a, ga- a gas station combination subway, any place that is a gas station and mm-hmm. a restaurant. It's um, always the best. The, the food hits different. And everybody always yeah. doubts it. But it's nobody the goes in there. It's the very so the tasty food, lead. The food is always on point because nobody, they're so excited that somebody's coming to, they're like, you're crazy enough to buy a food here? I'm going to yeah. do a really good job on this. And people don't think that you will, but that's how their energy is. They're super excited There's to like serve There's like a blue sushi does. in a gas station. <laughs> yeah. I need gas station sushi right now. Honestly, Yum. I have. <laughs> yeah. Just feeling real brave I that have. day. Been there, done that. I have two more for you. One is just, you know, it's not a gack unless I do cute animal news and I really haven't had a cute animal come in yet. So that I had to. This also was, I think, my most sent article for this month. So people really wanted to hear more about this caper, which sounds very similar to a caper from last month's gack to the point, but it's not the same because I checked because I was like, didn't I do this last month? No, this is a different scenario. Oh, buckle up. Pig named Kevin Bacon goes on the run, amuses Wisconsin <laughs> town. Kevin Bacon was lured home thanks to cookies and other sweet treats. Is this Kevin P. Bacon? No, just Kevin Bacon. Mm. Not okay. a super original pig name, I'm not going to lie. No, we've read yeah. about Kevin Bacon before. We've read about a pig named Kevin Bacon. I don't know if it's the same pig. Is I what do I'm like saying. it, though. God. It's a great I, I name. I love it. It's good. It's adorable. It's I'll, making me smile. It's it's great. Yeah. A large pig named Kevin Bacon got loose last week, then went on quite a food-fueled adventure back to his home. Jake Molgard, 40, and his family live in Brighton, Wisconsin, located in Kenosha County. Hold on. Let me just get one quick sound effect for Kenosha. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Amanda, I live in Kenosha. I'm apologetic, but I'm not sorry. Oh, they're coming. (laughs) Listen, Kenosha, you're not special. I hate all of Wisconsin. You just, you're extra special. Okay. Email Derek, our very real intern. Okay. Jake Mulgaard. They do not own pigs, so they had quite a shock when they spotted the 450-pound Kevin Bacon on their security (laughs) camera. 
That's the photo it's that's so on big. the drive. It's this massive pig, and there's you can see the welcome mat under his oh. feet. That's from like their ring doorbell. Jesus <laughs> Christ! It's a up huge to the door. pig. That's can adorable. you fucking imagine? You I get would an not alert be okay that with someone's that. at the door. He's so dirty you check and cute. Your camera. The ring he is cute. Pig alerted. Pig. pig. <laughs> Pig, pig alert. identified. <laughs> detected. That's what we go. Holy pig shit. detected. <laughs> Quote, my wife spotted an unusual shaped figure on our driveway camera walking along figure. our garage. <laughs> Mulgarden told the Associated Press, adding that the pig, quote, ended up coming right up to our back door. Ever the gracious host, his wife began feeding their surprise guest right away, said Bolgard. <laughs> <laughs> Quote, that's when she do- that's what she does with every animal that comes to the backyard. He said, this is the most Midwestern fucking shit I've ever totally. heard in my life. <laughs> Kevin Bacon enjoyed a feast of apples, rice cakes, tomatoes, and carrots. <laughs> Meanwhile, well, the Bolgards, <laughs> I know, that, that, this p- fucking pig's eating way better than I am. Yeah. Meanwhile, the mole guards began to try to figure out where their visitor had escaped from and how the heck to get him back home. But they didn't have to look long for, or very far. Mole guard called a friend to see if he knew anything about the large pig that had wandered into his yard. While the pig did not belong to his friend, the friend knew who owned Kevin Bacon and put the two of them in touch. Kevin Bacon's owner was not at home at the time, but asked if the mole guards could perhaps lure him back to his pen. This is so neighborly. <laughs> hey, I'm not home right now. I'm out, I'm I'm out. I'm about to see Dune too. Can you just lure him back to his pen? Could you lure? wrangle my pig for me? <laughs> hey, Mulgard, can you lure my pig back? Can you yank? Can you crank my hog back over to the to its pen real quick? He'll know where he's going. <laughs> he'll, he'll know once he's close. He'll know where he's going. <laughs> this could be done with some of Kevin Bacon's favorite foods. Cookies, marshmallows, and other sweet treats. <laughs> He's like, Kevin what's this Bacon? rice cake bullshit? Yeah. This, I did get not these ask for apples. Away from me. Piece of shit. <laughs> Kevin Bacon apparently has quite the sweet tooth. Where's my Duncan? <laughs> I'm fucking losing it. The Mulgards, Jake, his wife, and their 16 year old daughter acquired some of Kevin Bacon's favorite foods and then began marching him back to his home. Deputies from the Kenosha County Sheriff's Department escorted them for part of their mile-long trek. It's a mile? Jesus. This is asking a lot of a neighbor. This is asking way too much of a neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Can you walk a mile? Dude, you can wait, dude. Yeah. (laughs) Go home. (laughs) Hey, bro, the pig will be in my garage. (laughs) You When you finish your your movie, you come get the pig from here. Yeah, precisely. I'd be like, no, but I can hold on to him for you until yeah. you come pick him the, up. I tied the pig up on the curb. He's got a bowl of slop not, in front of him. Yeah. Sc- bowl of I'm not him. Scoop him up. leading a pig E.T. style for a mile. I'm also not, not wasting even leading, my cookies luring, like that. Yeah. Luring the pig for a mile. Yeah, I cookie can't. crumb trail? Come on. No. In oh. this economy? Fuck, those yeah. cookies are like 20 bucks a box. It's insane. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <Reese's> pieces. <laughs> <laughs> on its Facebook page, the Kenosha County Sheriff's Department had a had a little fun. Oh, fuck you with the rather unusual call for assistance. <laughs> Someone yelled pig. Second shift deputies last night sure heard it. The department wrote on March 4th. That joke's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> deputies responded to help this 450 pound pig back onto the property safely and not so quickly. The department also wrote. The deputy who arrived to help escort Kevin Bacon back home took a picture with him. No, I don't care about your selfies. Skip, so skip, they skim. did call the cops to lure the pig the mile. Or did the neighbors I, I, do I, it? I think they were just assisted. It's an escorted by. You know, they're, the cops aren't doing fuck all. I think they just they're there probably for the saw photo something op. funny. Yeah, they just saw something <laughs> yeah. funny. And we're like, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, we're going to watch how this plays out. <laughs> did someone say Bacon. In total, <laughs> Kevin Bacon's journey took two and a half hours and many, many cookies. Oh my oh, god! I wish somebody I'm... with a trombone would have been behind them. This is this oh would have required. <laughs> ba- boom, ba- boom, ba- do- ba- do- boom, ba- boom, ba- totally. And it would have been the, the moment of the decade if that would have happened. That is that... a fat pig song. If I've ever heard one, oh, that really would have been good. All right. Well, I'm scrolling through the rest of this and it is unnecessary, but God bless him. Kevin Bacon, I'm glad you made it home. 
And I will leave us all with this story that has taken the internet by storm this month. And I was all in. Also, our producer, Andrea, has been obsessed with this story. And so I know she's going to appreciate that I'm going to run through it today. This is from the BBC. This is what I'm here for. This is what I'm here for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Police uh, called to Willy Wonka event after <laughs> refunds demanded. <laughs> oh, I've got another photo to put on the drive. These are so tragic. I hope oh. you're going to talk about the Oompa Loompa meth lady. Um, of course oh I am. <laughs> of course. She is an icon. She's <laughs> she is. fucking iconic. Yeah. <laughs> so, police were called to an event described as a Willy Wonka experience in Glasgow as angry families demanded refunds. <laughs> the event Amazing. was advertised as, quote, a journey filled with wondrous creations and enchanting surprises at every turn. I'm hoping they cover all of this, but if they don't, I have things to fill in the blanks. I have, I have your a album lot. does too. Oh, my God. Yep. <laughs> but one visitor told BBC Scotland News that it was Little more than a, quote, abandoned, empty warehouse. (laughs) It was canceled by organizers House of Illuminati midway through on Saturday following complaints from parents. They have sent uh, they have said full refunds will be given to everyone who bought tickets, which were reported to have cost up to thirty five pounds. So if a family of four went to this. It would be like a hundred and ninety something dollars, mm-hmm. right? Jesus. Three six nine to uh, hundred. Once in a lifetime event, Lucy. Once in a lifetime. Whatever. Event. Four eight twelve. One hundred and sixty dollars. I'm rounding. I can't math. I have the math dyslexia. Anyway, Ava Stewart of East Kilbride said she saw children crying with disappointment at the event and also fear. <laughs> we'll get to it, which was scheduled to run on Saturday and Sunday. The 19-year-old attended the event at Box Hub Warehouse in White Inch with a group of friends after getting hold of discounted tickets. Quote, it basically advertised this big, massive Willy Wonka experience with optical illusions and big chocolate fountains and sweets, she said. Kind of like Meow Wolf, but Willy Wonka. (laughs) But when we got there, it was practically an abandoned, empty warehouse with hardly anything in it. A post from Organizer's House of Illuminati in January described the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory themed event as where dreams become reality. A Facebook group has been set up by people left Boring disappointed. Ass dreams. Yep. After after being disappointed after buying tickets for the experience. So there's a whole Facebook community that's like, yeah, I fucking went to this too and this sucked. Ava said she spoke to people who had traveled from Aberdeen, Dundee, Fife, and even Newcastle to attend, which I have to assume are far away. She also spoke to actors who were hired for the event who said they had been learning scripts for months and were told on the day to abandon them and improvise. (laughs) Ava said she heard absolutely nothing from the company and that she was not very hopeful hopeful she would get her money back for the ticket. (laughs) Yulia Burns paid £36 for two tickets and her and her eight-year-old daughter, Lydia, or for her and her eight-year-old daughter, Lydia, daughter, I'm so sorry, but left the venue frustrated. She, Lydia, loves the book, and she was really looking forward to getting there, Yulia said. When we arrived, just a few people with kids were near the door. Everyone said that the event is canceled, but there wasn't any notice at the door or on the website. She said there was no communication and tickets were still available to buy for the event. Quote, we were just staying, talking with people, others arriving and arriving and arriving and arriving, and the crowd became angrier and angrier. We left the place and got back home. Never had a chance to get inside, said Yulia. So there's like a mob forming outside of this (laughs) shitty Willy Wonka experience. It's so amazing. In a post on Facebook, a House of Illuminati spokesperson said, Today has been a very stressful and frustrating day for many. And for that, we are truly sorry. Unfortunately, at the last minute, we were let down in many areas of our event and tried our best to continue on and push through and now realize we probably should have canceled first thing this morning instead. They How added that they... F- no, they shouldn't have. They it's, shouldn't They have. never should have done this in the first place. <laughs> Hard disagree. Oh, you love it? Alvin's a huge fan. Amanda. You think it's the best Lucy, thing ever? This is, listen, first of all, what you're saying to me, for how Twitter how Twitter phrased this to me is not how I got it all. So I, I appreciate the facts, but the facts are nothing compared to the day that I had watching this unfold. The way that this was explained oh. to me was that this was an, a script written by AI. Correct. And there, that, I watched that, that is, so many YouTube happened? videos about this. Yes. So the okay. scripts <laughs> were indeed written by AI with extra characters added that do not exist. Yeah, there's like a chocolate in- demon. AI 
like started yeah, making up. <laughs> what was it called? Yeah. Like the the nobody or something? Yeah, it was Mr. something crazy. Nobody. <laughs> it's like, they just made the up this mask? character. Yes, and yes. it hid behind mirrors. So, like, these kids weren't crying because they were disappointed. They were crying because they'd walk up to this funhouse mirror, and then this demon would appear from the other side of it and sk- in this hor- horrifying wig and, like, a big black <laughs> cloak and, like, a white silver mask. Oh, it's completely awful. unfamiliar to anyone who's read the book. Because yes. it doesn't exist. It's yeah. Not, yes. It's not a thing. Right. <laughs> yes. And these kids are all screaming and crying. And then... The the refreshments that they offered were a Dixie cup of lemonade and one <laughs> single jelly bean per <laughs> per customer. It's supposed to be a candy. So there's no land. chocolate. It's like it's Fire factory. Fest. It's like Fire Fest. It's like avant garde. I mean, I feel like we should take I every love it too. Roll doll book. Any kind of weird cause because the thing about it, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is a weird story. So mm-hmm. giving it to AI and being like, interpret this. Kids yeah. are getting sucked up into tubes and disappear. Their kids are being disappeared in the place. So yep. I can understand I'm how it's spit at out. AI. This- <laughs> I'm I am overjoyed at AI, and I want more experiences <laughs> like this. And I want them to go bad, make them terrible on purpose. <laughs> this is like Giant an, a, a peach? brilliant. <laughs> yes, this is like <laughs> if Nathan Fielder did this, oh this show would win a thousand Emmys. This oh is like a brilliant. God. This is this could be so brilliant. One of my favorite videos from it is the guy that plays Willy Wonka because, like you said, nobody knows yes. what, knew what the hell was going on. This chocolate and demon who's a came out. Red-headed guy with a big beard, and he was like, "If anything, <laughs> I would play an Oompa Loompa. Why the fuck you cast me as Willy Wonka? Makes no two. sense. He's he like, like, why am I Willy Wonka? He's like a he's like a TikTok whistleblower for this event right now, and it's so fucking funny, dude. He's amazing. <laughs> The chocolate demon comes out and he goes, what is that? Like, because he, he's in character. So like, he, it's like being at Disney World. All the people are trying to be like, <laughs> what the fuck is that? To the, welcome to the chocolate factory. Kid. What the fuck is that? And yeah. this demon comes out from behind the thing. Because no, nobody, if you know Willy Wonka, you're like, why is there a monster Then you're here? prepared for that. <laughs> like, yeah, if, why if is there a real, masked demon? <laughs> then, oh, he's the real, chocolate thief. You'd be prepared for it. He's the chocolate thief. Yeah, no, he's like a he's a mirror rogue man. chocolate. He's an evil chocolate maker that lives in the walls. <laughs> it's like Phantom of the Opera yeah, sh- mix yes. up. But yes. sure, children were crying because they were disappointed. No, they were fucking freaked the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> a nightmare scene. I love it. I want to make sure they say crying. Quote I'm a obsessed. lot of customer complaints. Matthew Waterfield, operations manager at the Box Hub venue where the event took place, said he was contacted by House of Illuminati in regards to running an immersive family chocolate experience event, which like, okay, (laughs) AI wrote that. Suited for young families and children. Immersive family chocolate experience event. (laughs) I am human man. (laughs) Who the fuck is that? That's Mr. Nobody. He's an evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls of immersive family chocolate experience event of so, your imagination. So when you see the Oompa Loompa sitting next to a meth lab, essentially, oh, it uh, makes that, so much sense because it's like yes. these little creatures from a, a different world make chocolate. And this is what the AI spit out like. Mm-hmm. This is what it looks like in real life. <laughs> like when, without yep. all the wonderment, that is what Willy Wonka in the Chocolate or Factory the budget. is. Yeah, no wonderment, the budget. Yeah, no wonderment, no budget. <laughs> oh, and I love it. I want to rent a warehouse. I want to give AI several scripts, and I want to make more of these. I need these to be a real thing. I want to go to this. This will be amazing. Yeah, I I'm... think that anyone who was duped into going to this cause should consider themselves lucky. I am obsessed. I'm so sad that, yeah. Imagine how lucky you are to be, A, just born at the, at the like, alive at the time of the Glasgow Wonka experience <laughs> is, like, such a privilege. But imagine the privilege. I mean, you are truly one in a, in a, in a billion to mm-hmm. have actually been able to experience this. I don't feel envy to, often. And for only 35 pounds? <laughs> Like I would have paid. You're saving money. I would have paid Thousands. three times the amount conservatively easily. to experience this. I would easily pay. I love train wrecks. wrecks. <laughs> I love train wrecks. This is an amazing, amazing experience. And when the documentary of this comes out, 
it better. <laughs> I'm here for it. When they we made uh, that class action park documentary about that amusement park in New Jersey, this is mm-hmm. the same thing. But except mm-hmm. one phenomenal day that no one will ever forget. And you're telling me that how many people have camera phone footage? There's so much behind the scenes footage that we don't know. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm there's, so excited. There's got to be. There's got to be dueling Netflix Hulu documentaries that come yes. out at there's the same time about right it. Now. It's mm-hmm. yeah. And when I make my James and the Giant Peach experience, uh, <laughs> oh. I'm going to rival this. It will be amazing. I can't wait. What do you I think I would do, AI would do with that script? Come on. Oh, fuck it There's up. There's like a spider lady. Ooh. There's a spider lady and a, man, a cricket with a cane and a big headed little There's boy a literal living inside giant of the peach. Yeah, they eat yeah. the fruit. Oh, it's going to be crazy. Everybody's going to be covered it's in peach be juice. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on it. Get a I'm little Dixie cup of you. peach juice. Great. <laughs> and one seed. <laughs> All right. Bit. Well, those are my headlines for this month. Thank you to everyone who sent them in. And as always, if you have a funny headline for me, head to our website, go to the contact page at whiningcrimepodcast.com, select funny headline, and plop it in. Plop it in. Plop it in. Should we take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors? I would love that. Let's do it. If you've listened to this show before and even watched clips online, you know we love Framebridge because you can see it in the background of like everything in my office. My Mm -hmm. entire office is covered in Framebridge pieces. I'm obsessed with it. I love it so much. And this is like the easy and affordable way to get things framed that are either like sitting on your desk or sitting on your phone that you normally wouldn't put in a frame. It's easy to order online at framebridge.com or you can visit a Framebridge retail store and getting that stuff off your phone has never been easier. You just upload a digital video for them to print and mail your item using their free, secure, prepaid packaging. Or like I said, you can visit one of their 20 plus retail stores and Framebridge custom frames your piece in their studio using the highest quality materials and ships it to your door in days for free. I love it. Uh, yeah, one of my favorite things that I have gotten frame bridged, because yes, it's a verb now. It is. Is uh, a news clipping from sometime that our podcast was in a magazine and I was so proud of it. And I like sent in the clippings and I worked with one of their stylists to be like, okay, this is what I'm picturing. This is how I want it. Mm-hmm. And the stylist was like, I have got you. And they sent it back and there was like a part of it that's like on a little, pu- like a little puffy t- sticky piece. So it like Cute. sticks out. It's three dimensional. They made this uh, news story into like basically a little shadow box. I love that. It was so cute. It's just, it's one of my favorite things. So, like Amanda said, Framebridge is easy and affordable to custom frame just about anything. If you do have like a three dimensional item, like the keys from your first house mm-hmm. or, you know, like your, your favorite like hat or something like that, they can, they can, they can frame it. Mm-hmm. They can frame just about everything. They also have fair and transparent upfront pricing based simply on the size of your item. So you mm-hmm. know exactly how much you're paying and it's going to be very high quality. You're going to be very, very proud to like hang it on your walls. Oh, and yeah. trust us because both of our walls are covered in Framebridge. Mm-hmm. They also guarantee your happiness with your Framebridge item. If you're not 100% happy and satisfied with your piece, they will make it right. Their customer service goes above and beyond. Top notch. So see why Framebridge has been trusted to frame over 2 million pieces. Visit framebridge.com or a local Framebridge store to get started and custom frame just about anything. That's framebridge.com and treat your walls. Trade them. Real change happens when you are consistent and achieving the hair of your dreams is no exception. Mm-hmm. So thanks to Vegamore, sticking to my hair routine has never been easier And I'm finally seeing the results that I've always wanted because I don't run out of it. Mm -hmm. I use it every day. Well, every time I wash my hair. Mm -hmm. And these results are are sticking. I'm very happy They're legit. Yeah, your hair looks phenomenal. And (laughs) Vegamore products are 100% cruelty-free and are never formulated with potentially harmful chemicals like parabens or hormones. So when it comes to seeing results, like Lucy said, the key is consistency. We've just made it a part of our routine since we started using it. Like, God, we've been using Vegamore for years now. When did mm-hmm. we start? Like 2019? It's been a long time. Yeah. We're so happy with the way our hair looks and feels. And for the best results, you got to use a minimum of three months for visibly fuller, healthier, and thicker looking hair. I know that I have a lot of hair under these uh, extensions. And it's staying strong, baby, because that starts at the root. You got to take care of your scalp. I'm obsessed with the Grow Hair Serum. The amount of length that I have achieved 
weaved under my hair extensions is wild. My hair has never been this long before. It's like almost mermaid length on its own now. It's wild. And having my monthly subscription of Grow Hair Serum, Vegamore makes it easy to stay consistent. I don't have to remember to go pick it up. I signed up for a monthly subscription. I can get one bottle or three bottles sent. And I save more and I never run low on the products that I need to take care of my hair. And also, fun fact, Vegamore sells one bottle of Grow Hair Serum every 15 seconds on their website. That's how good this stuff is, so you don't have to just take it from us. Elevate your hair wellness routine this year with Vegamore. For a limited time, get 20% off your first subscription order by going to vegamore.com slash gals and use code gals at checkout. That's V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash G-A-L-S code gals to save 20% on your first order. Vegamore.com slash gals code gals and treat your hair routine. Treat it. All right, we're back, and Lucy will not be explaining why there's, like, a towel shoved in her shirt. (laughs) She just wants one really big boob (laughs) with the tail of the towel sticking out the top. It's an ascot. (laughs) She has a dicky shirt tucked into her shirt, and that's her business. Her her dicky is all crinkled up. (laughs) It's a hemopene dicky. I'm (laughs) dub-dicked. Ish. Oh my god. Double dick. Double dick. <laughs> but welcome back. And Alvin, <laughs> it's your time. Are you ready? To shine. With some coven confessions? With some coven confessions. Yeah. I'm super excited for some coven confessions. Also, Which... I didn't explain. There's an ironing board behind me, and I'm not going to explain that either. No. So, uh, yeah. People who need, who have really good professional podcast setups that use sound dampening techniques. All, all of the most yeah, professional people that, use the listen. ironing board technique. We're the fucking idiots. They don't even know. They don't even know. <laughs> also, I'm a seamstress. Mind your business. Okay. Seamster. So, I'm a seamster. No, I'm a seamstress. Um, so, uh, Coven Confessions time. Yep. Super excited. Alvin has not read these. We have not read these. these. Andrea pulled these for us. So, we're going to experience this horror together. I'm so excited. So I will also be crocheting. Off, it starts off in parentheses. Blame it on the rain. Blame which, it on the yeah. rain. We're <laughs> off to a good start already. That's like beautiful. You got to blame it on something. <laughs> so here it's we fine. go. The year was 2009 and I was a fresh faced 23 year old embarking on my first proper grown up relationship. I had met my boyfriend. Let's call him James. At university. Oh, this is a this is across the pond. It's over the water. Oh, at university. It must be. Uni. Um, <laughs> yeah, at uni. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> he had graduated the year before me and had moved back to his hometown. So most weekends, one of us would travel the three hours or so so uh to stay with the other. Not worth it. <laughs> yeah, three hours is a long drive. You're for young obviously twenty three. My back yeah. can't do that shit. <laughs> young anymore. loves. Come on, man. <laughs> These emissions? Come on now. We'll just cyber. I did used to drive to Bemidji <laughs> to get laid, so that's yeah. fair. All that petrol? I don't I've think done, so. I've been there, done that. <laughs> so, this particular weekend, it was my turn to travel to him. James lived with his brother. The house was exactly what you can imagine a house lived in by two young 20-something boys was like. Immaculate, Ish. probably. Um, um, probably smelled like um, Creed or maybe yeah, Axe body spray. Nary a pube in sight. Nary a maybe stray urine. pube. Ugh. Well, you have the to mark your territory. Are you guys wouldn't know anything about that. It's houses like that, or <laughs> having been to apartments and houses like that, that make me uh, so grossed out by the plastic knob over, like the base of the toilet where it screws into the ground. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and no, there's the some the cruddy things general. up under that cap. Yeah, when you yeah. really there's get just... to deep cleaning a bathroom, you're yeah. like, and things you know get really boys, nasty in here. You know, those boys that age are never cleaning that cap. No, it's never been Or clean. under that cap. The, no cap. It's like brown, no pea cap. brown, <laughs> dried brown. Stop. We know. Don't say it. Dried brown. Stop. Yeah, dried brown. <laughs> <laughs> Petrified brown. <laughs> Don't so. cricket me. I'm shaming you because how dare you do that? How dare you do that to us? How dare you do do that? Yeah. The house that Corey lived in early 20 somethings with his early 20 somethings boyfriends i stayed over there periodically and there was one bathroom on the main floor where Corey's bedroom was so it was the bathroom that i always used there was no sink i had to go from the bathroom to the kitchen to wash my hands one day one day i was like i'm gonna deep clean this bathroom because i'm the only one that uses it like i this is my bathroom now 
I thought <laughs> that the floors were like a butter yellow. No. Nope. Stop talking. They Stop weren't. Stop talking. They were supposed to be white. <laughs> So Shout out to all the women gross. that didn't run from love like that, you know? Shout out to all the women out there who who saw the potential in a guy who lived with guys <laughs> and didn't throw up everywhere, you know? And you guys stayed and you watched 40 year old version on a pile of dirty laundry that's on the bed, you know? And that's that's what it's about. That's you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta really get it out of the mud with a person to tell if you love them or not, you know? There's so just many coins time- in that bed. <laughs> Yeah, so many coins. And there just comes a time in your life where you're like, I'm done having sex in beds that are just on the floor. Like, I need like forest green sheets. Yeah, like I need a fucking bed frame and a headboard would be nice. Okay, a headboard would be nice. I'm fucking done with this. A bed with with just with just the tight sheet, with just the uh, first sheet. No, no comfort. I kick (laughs) off the top sheet. My my husband and I make the bed the first time when we put the sheets on. We make that's the only time we ever make the bed. I do and not use the a top, top sheet. They're the, pointless. No, the top sheet just because we have separate blankets. We don't share our blankets. We have separate body pillows. I have a marine style. I, re- I respect it. Yeah, no, I have a I have a <laughs> nest of squishmallows that I sleep on every night. He has one specific pillow that he uses. You the got a line sheet, of arbor vitae in between you. Correct. The a border. top sheet makes no appearance after the first night of sleep. It gets kicked I, to the bottom and then it's gone. And the cats yeah. play in it. No top sheet. Yeah. Well, this 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 lady gets it. She, she clearly she was, you know, in love in a room that was grotesque. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. an issue that they had was that the plumbing to the toilet in the single bathroom in the house was very temperamental and they never bothered to get it fixed because it's not that big of a deal if the toilet doesn't flush for a for a day. <laughs> Fucking yuck. <gasps> So oh, they, they just, just yeah, it if it's sit. yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, let it mellow. If it's green, it, it's all mellow. <laughs> it's all just it's mellow. All and, mellow. And then I get the, I guess they get one flush a day. I don't even really understand the... <laughs> I don't get the physics, it's 9 the science. PM. You can flush. <laughs> <laughs> so. Whose turn is it to flush? <laughs> John, Sick. it's your day to flush. Sick. <laughs> so this event occurred when myself and James were still in the honeymoon phase of dating. Oh, what a good time. Clearly. Where you yeah. where you like where you like to pretend that you don't shit or fart or have any bodily functions at all. I, I never was so had paranoid that phase of- with Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it was, was like, so- hi, nice to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a, it, yeah. was a, it was a it was an adorable fart. Yeah, it was a, it was a neat cute fart. My farts are Burr. not cute. <laughs> Demure. <laughs> uh, so she continues. I was so paranoid about my new boyfriend being subjected subjected to the sounds and smells of my raging IBS that every time I <laughs> that every time I needed to, <laughs> every time I needed a shit. I would I would make an excuse to go to the shopping center down the road to use the bathrooms there. <laughs> I'm just a girl. Got to go shopping. <laughs> oh, I know. I got to go get more um, nacho chips. You know how we like the chips and salsa so much. I know. I'm crazy. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm out of bras again. Yeah. <laughs> I have yeah. to stop buying these disposable bras. Yeah. I have to go get more <laughs> more girl products. And, you know, do, dudes at 23 it's are like, tampons. Oh, hey, no I more, need to get no tampons more. Yeah, every cool. day. See you when you get back. I'll see you when you get yep. back. So this particular day, it was raining hard. James was taking a nap. His brother was out and I needed to shit badly. I decided that I would avoid the weather and use their bathroom like a normal person for once rather than just pooping or rather than just rather than just popping to the shop for snacks or a forgotten toothbrushes or wine or et cetera. I went to the bathroom. Every day. I mean, maybe she doesn't poop every day, but I do. And then you got to buy something. So now you're costing yeah. yourself money because you got to yeah, come back with something. Yeah, this is expensive. Yeah, this is racking up. I wish Good I was for rich enough business. to make an excuse to go to the mall to shit every day. <laughs> Lucky. Just buying gap tops every day because you got to go take a shit. Your privilege is showing. <laughs> yeah. You're buying all these cow tails at your local market because you have to shit? That's racking up, man. You're, you're spending cow unnecessary tails. money. <laughs> so, and really so, just contributing to your IBS. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on. Stop eating Doritos because you gotta take a shit. That's 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 a that's a dangerous cycle. You are a snake eating your own tail. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the bathroom, shit. did what I needed to do, and pulled the flush. Pulled the Uh-oh. flush. This but is it's not nine PM. They this have a rope. Is... They, you pulled the flush. Do they have a cord? It is the European. Yeah. So I, I I pulled the flush. Nothing happened. 
I pulled the flush again. My enormous turd bobbled gently in the toilet bowl as a tiny <laughs> trickle of water was released from the cistern. Oh, they know about toilet stuff. Uh, yeah. And then lay still. Oh, it was wasn't boring. 9 p.m., babe. You can <laughs> yeah, only flush, flush once time. a day. <laughs> Fuck. This was my actual worst nightmare. Oh, when that water yeah. just, when it doesn't have the power. Oh, that oh. is such a real moment. Oh, when yeah. you're like, oh, this is a this is a plumbing issue. This isn't a plunger's not going to fix this one. I'm no. done. It's a real Harry Dunn situation. I really hope this story ends in her going in that toilet and grabbing this. I really, I really hope this goes down that pathway. <laughs> bail out grabbing the it out of the toilet. So. Sick. <laughs> Get the poop fork. Break it up. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I started to panic and look around the bathroom for anything to help get rid of the monster log. <laughs> could, could I could I could I fill the bin with water and pour from a height to flush it down? I've or done like that. Create a work, create a a, a, a a pressure vacuum. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Ooh, you MacGyver. This is a very. Oh, I would have never thought. Listen, that. Smart. Yeah. Desperate That's, times call for desperate brilliant. measures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to the the UK educational system if that's where they're from because I would have never thought of that. My first thought would have been to grab it, and there would have been no other thought. You'd fill it <laughs> with a very, it's a very seventy American thought. milliliters of water. <laughs> yeah, she went straight into Bill Nye the Science Guy thoughts. Like, well, if I stand at an angle and drop it right into the hole, it'll yeah, create from a vacuum this and exact suck it down. Height. <laughs> <laughs> it's that it's that meme. It's that meme of the lady with all the, with like, the math, math the floating around. <laughs> How to get this shit to flush. She beautiful minds it. <laughs> so she goes, um, she, so she had that thought, but she goes, no, the bin was made of wicker and not watertight. <laughs> no. A wicker she bin? Goes, Ew. A wicker bin. So, oh, God. Stuff it down the shower drain? Too messy. And oh. then it hit me. <laughs> Waffle stomp. <laughs> <laughs> and then it hit me. The house backed onto a park where people regularly walk their dogs. I knew I was running out of time. <laughs> no one's going to know. This person. I know. Yes. I'm, I knew I was running go, out of time. Let me just grab my seatbelt here. I'm buckled in. I'm ready to go. I knew I was running out of time as James was likely to wake up soon and his brother was due home any minute. So I took he a deep breath. He was sleeping in the other room? Sleeping yeah, in the other room. Yeah, that's why she went panicked. to go shit, finally. <laughs> <laughs> time, the, the time is of the essence. The so, boyfriend uh, like oh. rustles in the bed. She's like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> she freezes. <laughs> He's in the. Um, oh, oh. <laughs> so, this is tense. I love this. Okay, Holy so shit. I knew I, I knew I was running out of time. So I took a deep breath and did what I needed to do. Oh, I reached God. into the toilet bowl, grabbed my shit, ran into the back garden, and hurled. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And hurled, hurled my still warm turd with the accuracy and power of an Olympic shot putter over the eight foot high fence into the park beyond. Park beyond. <laughs> the park beyond. <laughs> if anyone found the poo, they would just think it was an it was produ- produced by a very big dog that was owned by an irresponsible person who didn't clean up after a them. A very large, quite sickly dog. A fucking Burmese. Yeah. Bernie. Mount Bernie's mountain dog. Uh, an Irish wolfhound with IBS was. Here. It was the perfect crime. She wrote. It was the perfect crime. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, oh, somebody's cane corso laid a mean one out here, and they no. didn't clean up after it. <laughs> so, I went Good thing we inside. have security cameras. <laughs> yeah, oh the, no. Oh, she got caught a turd in the ring. just flies over the fence. <laughs> I swear to God, if that ends up turd being detected. what happens next. I'm still buckled oh. in, so I'm super <laughs> So I went back inside, washed it. my hands four times, and had victory sex with James, who for the rest of our relationship never found Wait. out about <laughs> Wash my she, hands four she times. Was very, she then was had very victory proud of sex. <laughs> <laughs> She's there having sex. She's like, "What would you do if I just shit in your bathroom and took it out with my toilet with my bare hands?" He's like, "What? Nothing. I'm the best." Let's kiss okay. by the wicker bin. <laughs> what if we fucked yeah. after I did my buy a shit in the yard? Ba- a, why don't you buy a fucking trash can that doesn't have holes in it? Smack. Yes, ma'am. That's right. I do She's what I want. She's just running on pure adrenaline. <laughs> She's on a high. <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking 
I could rob a bank if I wanted to, right? Yeah, she, yeah. She's yeah, like, okay. I'm fucking invincible. I could do fucking anything. I'm it's on like, this is a weird, brand new kink. Okay, okay. yes, yeah, weird, weird sex talk, but okay. What's sure. gotten into you, babe? <laughs> so I'll throw you out of this window like I would throw a shit, huh? Yeah, I'll throw you over the fence like one of my own hot turds. <laughs> so, so, Holy so, fucking so, shit, dude! So James, for the rest of their relationship, never found out about my shit slinging antics. We broke up about a year later. Uh, <laughs> I, d- I did, however, tell my now husband, who threatened to tell the story at our wedding. Love you all. Please, c- please come to the UK soon. Well, so, we'd love to. We would love to. <laughs> we'll wow. avoid all dog barks. <laughs> yeah. We don't trust you. I, Take us oh to the scene of the God. crime. No, you're all liars. Why would we go to the UK? <laughs> <laughs> that was that was quite a story. That was quite a story. Oh my god! I love I that. Like I love that. that she just rolled her sleeves up and got into it. You know. Yeah. And Sometimes then when you got a problem, took her solve pants it. off and got on top of it. Women yeah, get like shit victories. done. Yeah. Women v- get big, shit. Literally, yeah. Literally. Um, I can't. <laughs> Yeah, victory sex is a crazy way to phrase th- to phrase that. Like, yeah, is that what that was? Yeah, she's that just was a win. Her fist in the air the, the whole time. Did it. She throws it, and yeah, she does the Tiger Woods like mm. silent. I fucking, mm. I fucking threw that thing over the cleared the fence, cleared I'm the go fence. Fuck. I'm gonna go. Fuck. I'm gonna go wash these hands three oh, to four my times. Colon's empty. I'm gonna I'm fuck. Go, we're fucking. I mean, that I get. That I totally get. <laughs> but uh, so, so I'm you really got to get like, under your nails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like the most in the mood after I've taken a good dump. You just grabbed a whole shit. You yeah. got to wash those hands like house, you know, like, mm-hmm. like you know, you got to wash those <laughs> like hands. Like you're going in, you're scrubbing in. Yeah. Back of the hands, the bar, rubbing the bar in. on there. You're, yeah. yeah. You got to get Grey's Anatomy with it. When uh, yeah, it's I rubbing was, alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> when I was given instructions to prep for the surgery I had on my foot. They sent me home with like that soap, the like surgical like scrub in soap. Yeah. They wanted me to wash my foot real good before coming to the hospital. So I have some. You had to do that at home. Why wouldn't you just do that at the hospital? They want you to do it at home and the night before, at home the morning of, and then they do it again at the hospital. They are I very, real, very, real very strict, especially <laughs> post COVID, about bringing in any kind of germies and mm. infection. Anyway, Plus your foot's disgusting. So, plus my, my foot in particular. This they actually <laughs> created this new protocol for my foot. <laughs> code Jacobson. It's, we've got a code J. We've got a code J. We re- we ready we ready for another one? Yes. yes. This this one's this one's quick. So you know oh, it, geez, this one goes. Okay. It wasn't me. Great song by the way. Um, I love shout that to Shaggy. Song. Um, mm-hmm. Hey gals, absolutely love your podcast. I write this as a 32-year-old who has never had butt sex. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. We're getting right to it. Okay. Get right in there. All right. That's the confession. Thank you for um, listening. Have a good love time. Love to be here. That's love the end the of the show. Thank you, thank you, guys. Yeah, love the show. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, so, so, so they proceed. It's mostly because of this story. Oh, it's cute. Oh, God. <laughs> me, me, I, I'm buckled to have some a sip of diet, Dr. Pepper. Let me buckle back in. So uh, when I was a senior in high school, an uber rich kid in my grade had a party at his house. It was here that he and his, fr- and his girlfriend decided it would be a great time to try anal at a house party. <laughs> it's high school. It's high school. Sure. Okay. At a house party? What does that mean, Amanda? Yeah, I, I mean, even... <laughs> it's high school. You know. They're not thinking clearly. This they is got a great time up. to try yeah. butt sex. They, they, I'm telling you, they didn't plan that ahead and go, hey, that house party on Friday, that's yeah. where we should do anal for the first time. They were there and probably like drinking or getting a little high, and then they were grinding uh-huh. Getting just, that kind of was illogical playing, like, horny. Yeah, that, sure. getting the illogical horny where then they found an empty room and dude was like, is this the night? Yeah, and she's like, yeah, let's they do this. And that's they won a game how of that happened. Happen. That's how I did butts. Butts. They smoked that's the beer pong table. for the first time, so. Yeah. <laughs> they wrecked the party. beer pong table and then he's like, Can, you want to go do some butt stuff? Uh, Absolutely, I do. Take a swig of gin. In a friend of my friend's room. Thought you'd never ask. I've had like four. 
four BJ's wine coolers. I'm ready to let it in any hole I got. In my friend's little brother's room. Ew! In his race car bed. What if we did butt stuff at Jeremy's race car bed? We both just got iced. We we found a smear. We both just got iced. We both just got iced. (laughs) (laughs) Let's... Let's try the back door. <laughs> oh my god! I'm feeling loose. So, yes, <laughs> that's funny as hell. Just had to drink a whole smear of ice on my knees in front of a whole party. Let's try out. <laughs> let's let's take this party. Tonight's south. the night. Yeah, so. I bought us at least eight minutes. <laughs> so, so. I iced Tyler. I bought us at least eight minutes. <laughs> so, so, so this, the, uh, this person says that this couple decided that it would be a great night to try anal. It was not. Obviously, <laughs> it was not. <laughs> it was not. Spoiler it was alert. not. <laughs> Obviously, no research was done. No prep. Just a couple of high schoolers literally fucking around. So naturally, the poor girl ended up shitting all over her boyfriend's parents' bed. Oh, it was his house. Wow. You couldn't wait till the party was over? Mm. It's your no. house. You don't have to go anywhere. When also, you strikes. do have to research. You've got to Google. Yeah. I didn't sneak off to do it at parties. I would, like, make out. I was more That's of a, I like, mean. let's go down the street to the church or Taco Bell parking lot kind of gal. Well, you're a lady, Amanda. Let's be real. I was the combination um, Duncan gas station. Don't, yeah, the gas station. Exactly. Yes. Yes. yes after yes. after hours. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're a lady. Purgatory Park. The parking lot of a food line grocery Purgatory. store. We've all been there. We understand. Purgatory yeah. Park was definitely our local That's where you uh, go. Hook up spot. Yeah. That's where you go. <laughs> Shout out Minnetonka. <laughs> <laughs> what if we kissed at Purgatory Park in 2003? <laughs> what if we purified ourselves <laughs> in the waters of Lake Minnetonka? Yeah, so well, um, we did that too. <laughs> So, so let's get back to this girl shitting all over this. this oh, right. Well, this is second. This is secondhand information. She she didn't do it, but so. Oh, this girl's uh, scaring her friend out of anal because she shit all over somebody. This, this story, yeah, this story of her being at a party and hearing about this was like, nope, never doing that. So, got it. Unable to fully clean up the wreckage, the kid told his parents <laughs> that their that their elderly family dog was to blame. Yes. Trigger warning. Gunner Marie. That, <laughs> Gunner Marie. Blame the dog. You know dog shit all over the bed. Always. Trigger warning. Thinking that the dog was no longer in control of his bowels and clearly near the end of his life, they put the dog <gasps> down. No <laughs> way. <laughs> no. Your sexual deviancy killed the family dog, young man. I cannot. This cannot be real. I can't find the words. (laughs) I'm I'm too stunned to speak. Lucy's fucking dying. Why wouldn't anybody speak up? You took you take this to your grave. This is a take it to your grave. And it's his, it's, the, it's a, you know, it takes two to intercourse. And, and, and one of the intercoursers lived at that house. So that was, I would, you would argue his dog, his family his dog. dog. His happen. family dog. He let this happen. They're like, yeah, Biscuits is just shitting all over the bed. Sweetie, we got to put him down. You're like, wow. Yeah, yeah, what a yeah, fucking we do, we monster. Do. <laughs> I am, I am gobsmacked. He watched his family put that dog down knowing full well it's because he fucked his girlfriend in the butt. Yep. And they didn't Google it first. <laughs> and said nothing. As the I'm, dog took his last breath. He, I'm shocked. This is a this is a I know what you did last summer packed worthy. Yeah, come that on. dog better come back with a hook for an arm and just fuck you up. Hook for a paw. Oh my god. Then the dog comes back as the hash slinging slasher. A hook for a paw. <laughs> yeah. Just born with a hook for a paw. Oh my no, god. No, it returns from the grave with a yeah, hook for yeah. a paw. Oh, okay. For revenge. I think I'm like reincarnation. Revenge. For murder. Like, Take revenge. it to your Keep grave. Up. Take it to your grave. <laughs> Say it with me. Take it to your grave. No. Over butt stuff? Come on. Come on. Stuff. Grow up. It's not Grow like up. it all it's not like it was that good. She shit all over him. Yeah, no. I mean, come on. Don't oh kill. Oh, my God. You, the dog. Oh, may we all learn from this, is how she signed off that email. Truly. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> that is the worst. It's like, That's hey, really hey bad. girl, why, why don't you do anal again? Because the dog died the last time. Yeah. Do you think I want my the family dog to be I, murdered? Last, last time, time I did I anal, someone in my it, butt. it killed a dog. 
for yeah. when I killed it's a like, dog. Sorry, baby. It's my birthday. I didn't mean to ask a, such a crazy question. Are you trying to kill my dog? No, I'm so, no. What does it mean? I'm sorry. I just thought it'd be we'd spice it up a bit. No, I don't want to kill dogs. Mm-mm. And that fourth date conversation for the rest of that person's <laughs> life. Oh, I would never tell anyone that story. What's the craziest ever. thing you've ever Everyone. done? Everyone. <laughs> of course you fucking would, you monster. <laughs> I'm going to tell everyone this person's story. <laughs> of course you are. Yeah, I'm, I'm stealing this. This is, this is such a good dog, just did. Thinking the dog was seriously unhealthy and about to die anyway. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't wait to tell Corey. Thinking this was the last straw for the dog, they put him down. I'm comforting myself by assuming the dog was old and slipping anyway and it wasn't like one bout of false diarrhea and we and killed the dog like, yeah, get him out of here <laughs> you know you bad dog that's oh, how I mean, that dog went out he pooped all over the bed it's time for him to go that's awful. Well, i can't that's believe a, that guy did that's this horrible to too the decision being made to put it put the dog down after one accident on the bed i'd hope yeah. that's what i mean i hope it was the cherry on top of a long. Yeah, I hope decline. he was. He had a back wheel wear, uh, wheelchair legs. Yeah, and well, he was blind. He wasn't eyes. getting on the bed, but he definitely yeah. had milky eyes. That's what I'm yeah. picturing. Yeah, I hope. I hope so. <laughs> and he reeked. <laughs> really mangy scruff. So, the this uh, email is titled "Bum Scootin' Boogie." <gasps> Bum Scootin' Boogie. Bum Scootin' Boogie. <laughs> so it, it starts off. Let me tell you about the time that I learned not to eat strings. Oh, no. <laughs> no. You had to learn that? Okay. You had to learn that. This okay. is actually Shoot. written from... Strings it's... used to be my favorite food. <laughs> it's written from the perspective of a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Can't eat ribbon. <laughs> my name okay. is Beans, and this is how I learned not to eat strings. <laughs> Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. <laughs> smash that subscribe button. <laughs> That's the story of the last time I ate strings, guys. Strings. <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> Picture it. Get ready with me to eat some strings. <laughs> <laughs> A day in the life of me eating string. Get ready with me to eat string and force my parents to take yeah. me to the vet. <laughs> <laughs> For a so. $4,000 vet bill. <laughs> <laughs> Pawing on her little... Get ready with me to see how far I can push my parents before they put me down. (laughs) I want to follow that cat beauty influencer. This is Nick Studios, (laughs) Birch, number two. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Picture it. A four-year-old went to the bathroom to take his morning constitutional just like any other day. Except this time it was different. (laughs) That's not what a constitutional is. People call their morning poop that. My morning constitutional. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. The house was awakened by what I can only assume to be a scream that made my aunt think I was dying. I was very dramatic. My aunt and uncle came running into the bathroom to find their bathroom covered in shit and me scooting my ass across the floor. What? This... <laughs> Toby! I am, I am a shih tzu. <laughs> they, so they splat shit? Why was the bathroom cover? You know something? You read. We're not That's gonna... how you find that out. So, <laughs> so aunt and uncle come into the bathroom. Bathroom's covered in shit. You're scooting across the floor. Um, please, please continue. So this was the 90s. And they still had carpet in their bathroom. Oh, no. (laughs) No. An installed bathroom carpet under a microscope. No, no. Has to be. No, Alvin. The foulest. Luminol. No. Room raiders, you room raid this bathroom? Oh, do not. <laughs> do not room raid this va- this bathroom, so, please. Carpeted so. bathroom raider. <laughs> oh <my laughs> yes, no. I was dragging my ass across the carpet like a dog with worms. What goes in must come out, and out the string came. Now, stuck in my booty hole. Oh, now stuck in my booty hole. I had apparently tried to get, out, get it out on the walls. The cabinets... And yes, the floor. Use your hand. 
Yeah, jeez. Why are you trying to rub it out? Rub it out. Yeah. Rub it out. <laughs> Don't rub it out. <laughs> Do not. <laughs> By this point, my entire family had come to the bathroom. And we're all in tears laughing because in my words, there's a string in my butt. There's a snake in my boot. (laughs) How did I get the string out? There's a string in my butt. (laughs) There's a string in my butt. (laughs) Somebody's poisoned the water hole. (laughs) There's a string in my butt. (laughs) There's a a string in my butt. (laughs) So (laughs) how did I get the string out? You may be asking. My aunt had to pull it out like like a Woody doll. My aunt had to pull it out, and to this day, my cousin cannot help but remind me about the time I had a string in my butt, and Aunt Debbie had to pull it out. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> the bathroom was a literal shit show. Remember? <laughs> Remember that time that you got you got pulled pull string like a, a Raggedy Ann doll? Fuck! That, that is a wedding speech. <laughs> no, it's not. I would make all of my family sign an NDA. Yeah, you I do not get, get like I do not black. get embarrassed about really anything, but this I absolutely fucking not. My dad's no. my dad's friend had a dog that used to really like to eat women's underwear. Oh yeah, we had we Daisy liked that. And he had a girl over and she started like, crotch first. The next day could not find her like lacy red thong. Oh, and thongs are the tastiest. Couple days later, <laughs> the friend was like, the dog scooting his butt on the floor. And my friend looked at the dog's butt. And there's just a little piece of red lace poking out. <laughs> so he <laughs> pulled it and he described Found it as like starting a lawnmower, like, <laughs> and then he finally got it out and the dog went shooting off across the yard. <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> So. That could not have been good for the dog's guts. Just no, yank it out I don't like think that, you're but... supposed to pull. I'll let him let it work out. Yank but, it out yeah. like a lawnmower cord. No yeah, way. Aunt Debbie. <laughs> so. You're not supposed to pull. <laughs> so. The carpet was completely ruined. It was so ruined that my dad had to replace it. Thank Luckily, God. with the tile. <laughs> like, <laughs> of course, like you it was be. ruined. <laughs> you saved this bathroom. The carpet and also was that ruined carpet was ruined. Long shit all over it. it. Yeah, yeah. This is just the final straw. The, fi- yeah. the final string. Ew. <laughs> the string that broke the camel's back. The camel's back. <laughs> the <string> that... <laughs> <laughs> so there was no more carpet to be ruined by a booty hole scooting boogie. <laughs> that, was the, <laughs> that was the last time I ever decided to eat a string. And honestly, I did my aunt and uncle a favor by getting rid of the carpeted bathroom. That's true. I also like I that this still... email doesn't address that they ate string. It just was like, so anyway, I was this eating happened. some string. And then the string came out of my butt. It was like they this just got right to the string being in the butt. String. <laughs> yeah. Why, I would have loved to a follow up email. Maybe I come back and they, I'd love the follow up email where they go, here's how I started eating string. What I want to know string? what kind of string. Was it like thread, like a sewing thread or like yeah. twine? Yarn? Yarn? We'll never know. Like that, that cooking, don't talk about yarn while I'm string. crocheting. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, crocheting. Yeah, you tie up right like a uh, rack of lamb with. Get that out of your mouth. That cooking string. <laughs> 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 okay, this one. Ooh. Okay, Uh-oh. this was titled "Where are my dogs at." Oh, uh, stop! <laughs> <laughs> she did that on purpose. You I know she that. did. <laughs> so, it starts off. Okay, We're starts off. Okay. This is an emotional journey. So let's 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 go ahead, and I'm gonna I'm gonna buckle oh, in on this. Take one. it down. Okay. So, I lost my father not too long ago, and oh, things sorry. are still emotional for me. Sorry to hear that. Yeah, that sucks. It was my second day back to work, and I was just having a meltdown out on my mail route. Being a mail lady, you deal with all sorts of dogs, bugs, and other critters. Me, I'm terrified of bugs and goats. Oh. Not <laughs> and goats. <laughs> goats. Not the right career choice, LOL. You see a lot of goats as a male person? Okay. Wherever they are, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared of bugs and mules. I was like, what? Okay. I don't know. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. Okay. Goats are <laughs> so, creepy. I don't like their eyes. I love but goats. But she's coming across a lot of the goats. That's uh, okay. Um, okay. I am so terrified of bugs that I would call my dad to come kill um, my spider for me in my own house. Mm. I'm sitting there having my moment, and a damn horse fly comes into my vehicle. My fight or flight mode kicked in immediately as I watched the devil fly rampage through my van. <laughs> Uh-oh. The mother- Horse flies are the, the worst. And they're thick, too. 
They really yeah, make it when they, they land on stuff. It's really like a, they really smack things. Yeah, they're disgusting. Yeah. They're striped. Yeah. <laughs> Ugh. The motherfucker decides to land on my nose. <laughs> and, no! my resp- <laughs> <laughs> and my response, and my response, I slapped the shit out of myself. Oh, ouch. <laughs> there was no thought, just slap. I knocked my glasses off my face and also busted my own nose. Ooh. I get out of my vehicle. <laughs> I get out of my vehicle to try to find my glasses and just scream because what the fuck? Yeah. LMAO. What the fuck? Yeah. But I didn't realize nor pay attention to how close I was to a ditch. And as soon as I stepped out of the vehicle, I slipped and fell into a ditch. <laughs> at this point, this is not this, going well. Yeah, this is like the worst. Yeah, this, nothing's going your way. It's like an Alanis Morissette song. Mm-hmm. At this point, I had to turn back around and go back to the post office to clean up and change shirts from my busted nose. This is blood all over them. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> Took me forever to find my glasses out there looking like Velma. I figured my boss would be in her office so I wouldn't have to explain what the hell was going on. But wrong. I walked right into my boss. She Uh-oh. asked what the hell happened, and instead, <laughs> looking like an idiot, I lied. I blamed it on a dog getting too excited and knocking me over. Uh-oh. And they put the dog down. Oh, yeah, God. This... <laughs> <laughs> the post office filed a complaint and murdered that dog. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Story over? Nope. My boss went and, and had a talk with the owner. Oh, no. Oh, my God. No, it does not happen again. <laughs> no, I it does I not. Leave. I, don't, well, I don't think I want to do this anymore. <laughs> Alvin's <laughs> like, I can't. I'm not. My wrecked body. My boss went and had a talk with the owner of said dog. And she apologized to me so many times. And I just felt like shit. Laughed my ass off. Okay. So, just, okay. <laughs> she really has one of the sweetest dogs that I just threw under the bus. All oh, not a literal of, bus. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so my boss threw her dog under a bus. Um, <laughs> all of this, <laughs> all of this, because of a damn horsefly. I feel like this is a funny joke from my dad because even though he would come kill my spiders, he would laugh at me the whole time with, "You're literally 27. Kill your own bugs." Well, yeah. Dad, I tried, and now I have a swollen nose and a black eye. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a dead oh. dog on my conscience. And a murdered dog. All from my lies. This is the real Big Little Lies. This episode is Big Little Lies. It this is. is. The real Big Little Lies. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> this is an update. Oh. So this this is a follow-up to an email. Oh, so shit. So it says Gunner, Gunner Marie update. What? Oh, Gunner. I don't even know who Gunner Marie is. Gunner Marie is a throwback to a, a gack of many months ago. Oh, okay. So Gunner girl, Gunner Marie, yeah, go ahead. Is a dog oh. that was on a road trip with this like her boyfriend's dog or something. And they were on a road trip and this girl farted and it was a silent but deadly like really nasty fart. And she blamed it. it she blamed it on the dog, but then the dog got a whiff of the smart the fart and threw up in the back seat. And so oh. this guy just thought yeah. that like the His dog's dog own fart had gagged him. Was sick. Yeah, <laughs> then they put the dog down. <laughs> Just kidding, no, okay, here we go. So, okay, so this is from Gun. This is a Gunner Marie update. It says, "Hi y'all, I love that. Hi y'all, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, appreciating the story of Gunner Marie. I cannot Gunner tell Marie! you, how- Gunner, Gunner Marie, sweet Gunner Marie. <laughs> we love Gunner Marie. <laughs> I cannot tell you how much joy it brings me when I hear the two of you giggling over the over his name or allude oh. to that story. Plus, his name." I lo- <laughs> Yeah, honey. Oh, Gunner Marie. <laughs> Gunner Did we Marie. call him Gunner Marie or was his name Marie? Gunner his name Marie. Was Gunner for sure. Gun- we might Gunner have Marie. added the Marie. <laughs> I love that. It's very like it's very rustic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it should be like um a, a home a home sign on, on the dog, like on his dog collar. It should be like a home sign in cursive. <laughs> um, oh my god. <laughs> I love I love when friends text me like Gunner Marie was on Wine and Crime again. <laughs> I, I can't remember if I've reached out already and mentioned this, but Gunny passed away in the- No! God, so many dead dogs in this fucking episode. Gunner Marie, no! no! Gunny passed away in the spring of 2020. So we love oh! the fact that he lives on in infamy on my favorite podcast, no less. Oh, that dog died oh. before we even read that confession. Yeah, the dog, the dog, that yeah, dog, the dog was, was dead was when dead. we read it. Oh, then I don't feel Long bad anymore. 
Oh, long live Gunner. Long Sweet live Gunny. Gunner. We love Gunny. I think wow. it was that person's fart that just gave Gunner Marie some sort yeah. of terminal illness. I'm shocked Gunner Marie didn't die in the car that day. <laughs> Poor guy. A lot, of, a lot, of, oh. lot of dead dog talk this episode. A lot of oh. dead dog talk. <laughs> well, but you you did great. You Thank did you. a really good job. <laughs> Will there be more dead dog talk in your segment, Lucy? I don't think so. I don't remember. Oh, God. I don't remember. I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't think right. <laughs> All right. Well. Oh, God. Should we hear a word from our sponsors and then get to Coroner Corner? Let's do it. Let's do it. Spring has sprung, y'all. And as soon as it hits spring, I immediately think of a few things like the sun staying out past 7 p.m. Thank oh God. God. Yes. I-, I was just checking out my garden and seeing what's coming back from last year and the sudden urge to show off my super smooth skin that I've been moisturizing all winter long. So as the temperatures rise, so do those frequently bare-legged outfits, okay? I'm crocheting one right now. (laughs) But fear not, because we've got the perfect solution to keep those legs smooth and ready for any springtime adventures. And I know you've heard about Athena Club by now, but this is your official signal to finally try it. Athena Club's award-winning TikTok viral razor kit is worth the hype, and you need to try it to believe it. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, first of all, Athena Club's razors glide effortlessly. Mm -hmm. Thanks to their five precision-engineered blades, there's a super moisturizing water-activated serum with hyaluronic acid, plus it has built-in skin guards that prevent razor burn and reduce irritations. These Mm -hmm. are like, these are the Cadillacs of razors. They truly are. I usually don't shave like razor shave my armpits anymore because I'm so prone to razor burn I did it before the wedding in Mexico not a bump I'm telling you I was shocked yeah I feel like it just takes one swipe Mm -hmm. and you've got like mirror smooth skin supple soft and I'd be remiss not to mention the incredible price the Athena Club razor kit is an absolute steal at ten dollars yeah But don't let the price fool you. This razor feels expensive. It comes with an ergonomic handle that is, I mean, it's gorgeous. They come in Mm -hmm. a bunch of different colors. You're going to want to, like, keep it out. Mm -hmm. And two super sharp razor heads that deliver an incredibly smooth shave every single time. You'll also get the game-changing magnetic hook for easy storage. So this means you don't have to worry about your razor, like, ending up on your shower floor. Oh, my gosh. My old one fell every time and like the, the head felt like busted off and flew off. Mm-hmm. So no more goopy blades and better organization. So if mm-hmm. you still think that all razors are created equal and you haven't made the switch, you need to try Athena Club's razor kit. It's the best deal you're going to get on a premium razor and it'll help you feel confident in your own skin all year long. So if you're ready to upgrade your shaving experience, switch to the best razor on the market and show your skin you care with Athena Club. Head over to athenaclub.com to try their award-winning razor and body products and get 20% off your purchase with code GALS at checkout. You can also find Athena Club razors at your local Target store. Trust me, you won't look back. Happy shaving and treat your hair follicles. Oh, Tratum, I am not a big fan of baking personally. Mm -hmm. There's too much, like, precise measuring. It's not like that jazzy kind of cooking that Mm -mm. I like to do a little bit more. Too much can go wrong. Too much can go wrong. But since I started getting boxes from Wild Grain, Mm -hmm. I'm not baking, baby. And I am eating all of the fresh baked goods. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, technically I'm baking because I'm throwing it in the oven, but, like, Mm -hmm. that's it. Like, preheating the oven is the hardest part. Actually, stopping eating the the Bread. croissants. The, the entire part. loaf is pro- yeah, yeah yeah that's probably the hardest part. Wild Grain is the first ever bake from frozen subscription box for sourdough breads, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. And every item bakes from frozen in twenty five minutes or less. There's no thawing required. So if you were invited to that last minute dinner party and you're like, oh no. What can I bring to share? Baby, Wild Grain has you covered. You're going to have fresh, beautiful bread to bring over to your neighbor's house. <laughs> and you can now fully customize your Wild Grain box. So if you're a big bread gal like us, you can choose any combination of breads, pastas, and pastries. You can do a whole box of only bread, only pasta, only pastries if you like. The world is your bread box. Oh, 
For a limited time, you can get $30 off your first box, plus free croissants in every box. <laughs> when you go to wildgrain.com slash gals to start your subscription, you heard me, free croissants in every box. And 30 bucks off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash gals. That's wildgrain.com slash gals, or you can use promo code gals at checkout and treat your bread products. Trade them. If you are looking for a Mother's Day gift, that will leave mama speechless. Don't bother with material things, okay? Mom probably really doesn't need more stuff. I'm telling you right now. She's been around for a minute. She doesn't need any more crap, okay? So give her the most unique, truly unforgettable gift possible that shows her how much you appreciate everything she's done for you. An original song from Songfinch. Songfinch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life and the people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and it lasts forever. You are creating an original song. I mean, what could be better? Yeah. Songfinch walks you through this really simple process to create your original song. You just tell them who the song is for, what kind of style you want, like, and then you share some memories with them. And if that mm-hmm. sounds daunting, it's super not. It's mm-hmm. like in the form of a very easy like questionnaire. I did this for Lucy to celebrate the arrival of her first baby. Yes. And I was like, how do I even express how proud and excited and happy I am? And they just like <laughs> walked me through the whole process. I mean, if y'all have listened to the show before, you heard me play clips of that song for her on the air. Oh. It blew her mind. I wept. You wept. Yeah. And then an actual Songfinch musician of your choice writes the whole thing, records it, and produces your original song in four to seven days. The turnaround is so fast. So So, even if you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to get something for mom for Mother's Day and it's next week. Hey, babe, we got you. Songfinch. Absolutely. You can also get some unique add-ons to make your gift even more special, like a vinyl record of your song or one-of-a-kind art made from your lyrics. You can even add your song to Spotify. So you can be like, hey, mom, are you enjoying brunch? Guess what? Listen to what I just pulled up on Spotify. Yeah. It's so cute. So with more than 350,000 happy customers, Songfinch is proud to be called the number one custom music company in the world. So whether your song is for Mother's Day, Father's Day, an upcoming graduation or a wedding, or just to show a loved one how much you care, start your song now to lock in a top Songfinch artist. Mm -hmm. For a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free so you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere, anytime. Go to songfinch.com forward slash gals and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming to your original song for free, a $50 value. Again, our URL is songfinch.com forward slash gals. And don't forget to share your song with us too. We want to hear it. Songfinch.com forward slash gals and treat your gifting. Trade it. All right. Are we ready for Coroner Corner? I'm we ready sure are. Corner. Bringing us home with some creepy shit. Okay. So as we record this, Frogging Crimes came out today, Mm -hmm. and I can't get enough frogging news, so I have another bit of frogging for us. This was sent in by Hannah P. Most of us have, have never experienced the shock or terror of discovering a stranger has been living in our house without us knowing. But Brittany and James Campbell know exactly how it feels. Alvin, do you know what frogging is? No. People hiding in your house while you're living there. Is that... That's what that's called? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Frogging with a pH. Mm-hmm. I thought when somebody you meant, like lives in your walls. I thought you meant people that lick um, toxic frogs. Cross the street? No. Oh, no. Cross the, the street? <laughs> yeah, Frog- people like living in your walls or attic. Yeah, yeah, the frogging. trend from 2016, frogging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this, that's what frogging is. Okay. The couple who are featured in Lifetime's crew tr- true crime show, Frogging, Hider in My House, were away from their home in Honolulu with their two young sons for about a week, but got more than they bargained for when they returned. I hate getting more than I bargained for. Mm -hmm. It's so annoying. Typically, I love it. Really? (laughs) Like, oh, I'm sorry. In in the sense of, like, buying things. Yeah. (laughs) Never, I never, like, yeah. Well, okay, sure. Like in the bogo situation. Like a Yeah, you go to Michael's and they're like, do you have a random coupon on you? We'll take 40% off of your purchase. I always have a random coupon because I am a Michael's member and I just log into my account. Yeah, get the app. Always Mm -hmm. get the app. Mm -hmm. 
And then I just on, hand it, I hand it to the cashier and I'm like, find me the best coupon. And then they just do it for you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On September 20th, 2019, the family found a man inside their home and the situation oh. just got scarier by the second. Yeah. James, 36, who was in the U.S. Navy, grabbed a sledgehammer for protection while Brittany, 37, called 911. Sledgehammer would not be my go-to. It's not no, easy it's, to wield. It's very yeah, heavy. you got one swing. Yeah. He's swing in the true. Navy. Yeah, but still. Uh, swing true. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he just had away. a sledgehammer right there. When the cops arrived, the ar- they arrested the intruder, 23-year-old Ezekiel Zayas, who was standing in the couple's front yard wearing James's clothes. <gasps> After he was taken away, the family believed that to be the end of it, but it became apparent that the nightmare had only just begun. Oh, no. Upon daring to venture further inside their home, the Campbells found sheer chaos, with Brittany describing the scene as, quote, just trashed. There were piles of pots and pans, James's music equipment was all over the living room, and their bedroom was a mess. He not only that, yeah, he was having a jam session. Totes, but not only that, but their old laptop had been used to record disturbing diary entries about no. the family. I hate a video diary, not necessarily a vlog, because it's like you intend for other people to see that, you know, regularly. But there's mm-hmm. something about a video diary that's like left for someone to find later. It's not like public. Blech. No. Very manifesto. He was also naked while he recorded these video diaries. Ugh, come on. Put your shrub chub away. Chub yeah. shrub. Quote, there were all these typed notes called the omnivore trials, a rehabilitation for rat like people. What? Oh. Brittany told the Post that it was at this point they realized the intruder had been in their home for a lot longer than they initially thought. No. As events turned sinister, the stay-at-home mom noticed uh, that knives had been laid out next to the computer, along with the typed-out manifesto containing gruesome plans for the Campbells, such as, quote, sexual reconstruction and a hand transplant. What is sexual Oh, wow. Oh, I oh, don't know. Guy's he just he wants to do these procedures. He wanted to do all these medical, you know, procedures on this family Ugh. so uh, a hand Brittany, transplant how odd she said quote he wanted to play doctor on us and not in the cute little kid way he wrote about how he could make us into perfect people oh Ooh. he's like the human centipede doctor oh yeah. my god it is totally nope Quote, the guy had been sitting naked in my chair. That's disgusting. Ew, not in my chair. Yeah. yeah. Sitting, I mean, scratch That's everything else. That's my chair. Did. Yeah. Don't have your asshole mm-hmm. just open on my chair bare. No, kissing my chair. Yeah. So suddenly the couple began to make sense of the incidents that were previously unexplainable. That no. was so gross. It's never a ghost. It's, <laughs> it's the chair kisser. <laughs> yeah, ew. <laughs> Pucker up. Pucker up. <laughs> uh, for example, they had noticed a computer webcam turning on in the middle of the night over recent months and doors being left open or unlocked. Oh, mm, God, mm, no. Mm, 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 so mm, mm, the no. Lifetime TV show producer Jessica Everleth explained, it starts out slowly. Things go missing. She said victims are more likely to believe they're living with a ghost than a long-term trespasser. No. I think so. You think it's an urban myth, but it's more common than you think. (laughs) This is the one scenario where a ghost makes more... I would never think there's somebody living in the walls. I would go, yeah, this place is haunted. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, there's There's probably a person living in here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. In the walls. Fuck. Following his arrest, Zayas was charged with burglary and was released. Shortly after, he was arrested again for allegedly vandalizing a Buddhist temple. And in 2020, so after all of this happened, when he was incarcerated for the vandal- vandalism, it was alleged that he had killed a fellow inmate while he was in jail. He was charged with murder in the first and second degrees later that year, pleading not guilty. 
He was found to be unfit to proceed and is now at the Hawaii State Hospital where he waits trial. Mm. He's in Hawaii? They, yeah, they're in Honolulu. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's a great place to be locked up. I would, you know, if you're going to be think locked so. up somewhere. Yeah. yeah. As for I the Campbell know. family, they have since moved out of their Honolulu home and away from Hawaii entirely. They just, <laughs> nope, Over it. bye. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so that's a little frogging update. Yuck, I hate, I hate it. Frogging. Thank you. That was terrifying. This next little story is uh, this bit of Texas Texas lore that I hinted at earlier. Oh, Texas lore. Texas lore. Texas so I found lore. out about this this story courtesy of my boyfriend Encyclopedia Britannica's One Good Fact email. Highly oh, recommend. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't even have to sign up for that because you send it to our group chat like every day. <laughs> Not every day. Only when there's like a really good fact. Like today or yesterday. Was it today yeah, or yesterday? Or the day before that. Pope, <laughs> or Sunday. Pope Francis uh, had his first job as a nightclub bouncer. I think that was today. <laughs> I think it was too. Yeah. Oh, wow, bouncer. Yeah, one good mm-hmm. fact. Now he bounces for Jesus. Exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ironically, though, I found way more information on Wikipedia, so this is just a straight copy-paste from Wikipedia. Okay. I'm not sorry. I'm apologetic, but I'm (laughs) not sorry. But I'm not sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never been sorry a day in my life. I never will be. (laughs) (laughs) On July 29th, 1897, a four-year-old boy named Will Wood caught a horny toad in Eastland County, Texas. And by the way, a horny toad is actually a lizard. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh. The boy's father, Eastland County Clerk Ernest E. Wood, decided to use the reptile to test the West Texas tradition. They say tradition, but I feel like it's like rumor, not tradition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rumor that the creatures could survive for many years in hibernation. Uh. The, The horned lizard was placed in a cornerstone of the Eastland County Courthouse in Eastland, Texas, along with other capsule memorabilia, including a Bible and a bottle of alcohol. They just put this living animal in in a time capsule? Yep. Sealed it up. Put it in the, the bricks of the courthouse. Okay. Oh. It was it was the 1890s. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I guess, it was high right. school, guys. Guys, it was, it was the high 90s. school. Of course you're gonna do anal at a house party. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we're high schoolers. Of course we're gonna of try anal, we're gonna at, a anal at a house party. <laughs> <laughs> It's the 1890s. Of course, we're going to seal up a blizzard in a courthouse. <laughs> it's okay. the 1890s. Of course, we're going to put a horny toad in our time capsule. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't 30- ban TikTok, Congress. <laughs> Seriously, I will be so bored. Okay. Yeah. Way to set us back another 60 years. Seriously. First, it's Roe v. Wade. Now yep. it's TikTok. Now it's TikTok. First, they come for the Roe v. Wade. Then they come mm-hmm. for the TikTok. <laughs> First, they came for the women. Then they came for Gen the Z. TikTok. <laughs> 30 years later, during the Jazz Age, construction workers began to tear down the old courthouse and town Uh-oh. officials scheduled a public event to open the time capsule in mid-February of 1928. Wake the toad! An ambitious young newspaperman named Boyce House reported Boy's on the house? forthcoming Boyce house. house. Boyce Bo- house. house. Boyce house. Boyce house. Boyce house. <laughs> Boyce house. <laughs> uh, so Boyce house reported on the forthcoming ceremony in his articles for the Fort Worth Star Telegram. House part uh, particularly emphasized the mystery of the horned toad, which supposedly had been entombed in the capsule since 1897. So at that point, they were still like not entirely sure if that was just a legend or not. Mm. Yeah. As a result of Boyce House's sensationalist newspaper articles, a crowd of 1,500 spectators gathered yeah. in Eastland, Texas to witness the opening of the time capsule and to learn the fate of the horned toad. Oh, shit. See what life was Many like before s- Netflix existed? Yeah, I know. You just before go to TikTok. Instagram and watch, if we a, get watch a lizard TikTok. come out of a wall? Or, or There's a lot yeah. of lizard wall reveals. <laughs> get ready with me to go see if that lizard <laughs> in the wall is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> she said to no one because TikTok was gone. <laughs> 
so sad. It's so, so sad. She said to her cats. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen Grey Gardens? She said to her cats. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't get me started on that shit with you. Many spectators had traveled more than 25 miles to be Whoa. present. Wow. I mean, they're probably on like fucking horseback, so. It's a lot of miles. <laughs> and hundreds thronged around the makeshift fence that encircled the old courthouse. At exactly four o'clock on Saturday, February 18th, 1928, a live horned lizard was allegedly produced from within the time capsule capsule in capsule. front of the over in front of the overly excited audience. I feel like this is editorializing overly excited. They were they're I appropriately mean, excited. People there. It's a fucking they're gecko. Appropriately came excited. out of a wall. <laughs> and it's been it's alive and it's been in there for like 30 years. Yes. Holy shit. That's crazy. Like 30 and a half years. So Boyce House recalled the chaotic scene, writing, quote, when the brick wall was pulled away from the cornerstone, the crowd rushed forward. Went in wild. Ex- <laughs> in its excitement, pressing so closely against a worker that he barely had room to ply his pick in order to break a layer of cement that was over the top of the stone. They then he lifted a sheet of metal underlying the cement. After this covering was raised, disclosing the cavity, Reverend F.E. Singleton, pastor of the Eastland Methodist Church, who was standing beside the cornerstone, leveled a finger and said, there's the frog. It's a fucking movie. By God, there it is, the horny toad. All that lead up for there's the frog. There's the there's, frog. I was there's expecting so much like, more. There's oh, so much okay, more. Okay. Okay. I'm like, there better be more to this speech. There's so much more. Eugene Day, oilman, thrust mm. his hand into the cavity and lifted out a flat, dust-covered toad, which he handed over to Reverend Mr. Singleton. The pastor handed the creature on to Judge Pritchard, who dangled it aloft by a hind leg so that all might see. All, Suddenly, this, all the most important men in town had to make sure the toad is real and alive. You don't even know. This gets I so don't. much more dramatic. Suddenly, the other hind leg twitched. The frog was alive. Within days, national newspaper chains reported the discovery of the entombed lizard on their front pages. The New York Times reported the events on its front page with the de- God. declarative headline, Toad Alive After 31 Years Sealed in Texas Cornerstone. I have a oh. I have photos on the drive, which will be on the blog if you guys want to take a look at them. The Times article credulously reported, quote, after the cornerstone was removed, the toad appeared lifeless for some time, but in a little while it opened its eyes. In about 20 minutes, it began to breathe. The mouth, however, appeared to have grown together. (laughs) Oh. Oh. Efforts will be made. Use it or lose it. Exactly. (laughs) Efforts will be made to induce the toad to take food. And if necessary, the mouth will be opened by an operation. The toad is now on exhibition. So. (laughs) Like people could go look at it. Here we get to the exhibition. Following these newspaper reports, zoologists and other scientists began a public debate over whether a Texas horned toad could survive for such an extended period of time Mm. without water, sunlight, or oxygen. Yeah. Something's off. Dr. Raymond L. Dittmars, curator of mammals and reptiles at the Bronx Zoo, declared the alleged survival of the entombed lizard in Eastland, Texas to be, quote, utterly impossible. (laughs) In contrast, preeminent naturalist William T. Hornaday... The curator for the New York Zoological Gardens asserted that, quote, the incident was possible and gave an instance from his own experience in Ceylon, which was another word for Sri Lanka. Didn't talk about the other example, but apparently he had knowledge of this. I don't know. (laughs) Trust me. I heard about it once. Yeah. Yep. Indifferent to the scientific debate, Eastland locals instead ascribed the horned toad's miraculous survival for 31 years to the presence of the Bible in the time capsule. Oh god! So they're Shut saying because the fuck up. because the Turn wizard had a Bible in there. Yeah, <laughs> okay. he prayed that's, every day and he survived yeah, for thirty years. No, he didn't. His fucking oh, mouth fused shut. He didn't yeah. pray for shit. You can pray. I wish internally. that when they took that horny toad out of that uh, wall, 
that the guy would have bit his head off like Ozzy Osbourne. Now that <laughs> would have been a story. It's a lie. That would have been a story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been, yeah. <laughs> I look only, into your eyes. You start singing Ozzy Osbourne song. If only Ozzy Osbourne could have been available for this 1920s <laughs> cornerstone <laughs> reveal. It would have been a lot more eventful, I'll tell you that. It really would have. It's pretty eventful. I'm not even halfway through this. Oh, <laughs> Let's Jesus. get it. Due to the extensive media coverage, old Rip which is what they named the toad, like Rip Van Winkle, Old Rip oh. became a national celebrity. The docile lizard was transported to Dallas, Texas for public exhibition by Will Wood, the same individual who, who purportedly found the specimen in the first place in 1897. After a public outcry by Eastland inhabitants and profit-hungry businessmen over the removal of the famous creature from their otherwise nondescript and insignificant town. How dare you fill in the rat hole? That was all of our tourism. <laughs> Basically, Wood returned old Rip to Eastland. Dallas exhibitors promptly sued him for $6,000 for alleged breach of contract. And... Uh, Today, that would be equivalent to $102,000. It's a oh. lot of fucking money. It's a lot Jeez. of money. So after this incident, Old Rip went on a national tour and 40,000 spectators viewed him at the Zoological Gardens in St. Louis, Missouri. He's famous. Later that same year in New York City, motion pictures were produced with Will Wood introducing Old Rip. And, quote, a bug catcher was paid 50 cents each for insects that the frog devoured to please the cameraman. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was a whole cottage industry around this horned toad. The peak of Old Rip's fame occurred in May 1928 when, during his national tour, the lizard was transported to Washington, D.C., where Texas Senator Earl Bradford Mayfield presented the specimen to President Coolidge. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> this frog met the president? Yes. Gave, and he gave him the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Holy shit. If you don't know a lot about Calvin Frogs? Coolidge, his nickname oh. was Silent Cal because he was just a quiet man. <laughs> he was super mm -hmm. chill. Yeah. So Coolidge, uh, a bemused Coolidge, purportedly declined to touch the horned toad and merely <laughs> nudged it with his spectacles. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so this hmm, is. This I see. Is cool. Thanks for stopping by. I guess. So it's a frog. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is, is it? A frog, a toad, or it's a, a lizard? Horny, yeah. What do I do with this? <laughs> or a mirror? Why are you in my house? <laughs> Who am I? Is this it? Is this all it does? It just sits here. First okay. I have to United pardon States a turkey. What? Now oh I have God. to touch a frog lizard. Ugh. So, according to the newspaper article, quote, President Coolidge asked numerous questions concerning his celebrated guest. He stroked the frog's back with his horn-rimmed glasses, and then President and Old Rip gazed steadily at each other for a full minute without a sound. Silent Cal had met his match. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking deeply unserious. I cannot believe this is what happens when we don't have TikTok. For a real. horned toad gets a national tour. It goes viral, but on foot. Yeah. <laughs> as a consequence for the, free, the creature's immense fame, horned toads were sold as souvenirs at the 1928 Democratic National Convention in Houston. For $2. horned toads? For $2.50, which in 2022 is the equivalent to $42.61. Oh, wow. Good the in Lord. the ensuing mass capture and export of horned toads for such sales resulted in the genus's precipitous decline in West Texas. Stop! <laughs> they like went extinct in they, West they Texas. They got overfarmed. Everybody they wanted did. one just to look at it. <laughs> yeah, according to Boyce House, our friend. So many horned toads were shipped out of West Texas that a Department of Agriculture bulletin foretold damage amounting to thousands of dollars if the export shipments did not stop in as much as horned frogs preyed on insects that devour local crops. They're like oh. crucial to the ecosystem. <laughs> yeah, you don't say. Mm -hmm. But I want one. Right. <laughs> but I want a flying squirrel. 
But Daddy, I want it. Was that? Is that yeah, that's a Willy Wonka. I wonder what that sure lyric, what that line was in that. Uh, I want it now. I would like to have a chocolate bar piece of candy, please. But Daddy, I want to be trapped in this mirror forever. <laughs> With the, with Mr. Nobody, the evil chocolate maker who lives in the walls. It's all frogging <laughs> or toading or lizarding. Soon after his national or tour, Ole Rip died of pneumonia on January 19th, 1929. It was he the pneumonia that got him. They made it that all that him. way. They touted him around the, the fucking country. <laughs> they they yeah. did. They're like, get out they there. Go do the thing. His... Go. He's like a circus Capitalism bear. Capitalism killed Ole Dance, Rip. Dance, frog. Yeah. Well, actually, we'll get to the dancing Stare, frog, too. Frog. Oh. After old Rip's death, the specimen was kept in a tiny satin-lined casket and displayed in the lobby of the new Eastland Courthouse. There's a picture <laughs> of him in his little glass coffin. I want to see him. <laughs> decades later. Internet, man. Seriously. <laughs> look at what decades. we were. Decades. <laughs> this is oh so. Oh, my God. Look at him. <laughs> this is oh so fucking God. dumb, you guys. Decades later, in September 1961, Ole Rip briefly disappeared from the museum exhibit and a ransom note demanding $10,000 for his return. Oh, my God. After a citywide search, the specimen was recovered. A year later, in 1962, John Connolly visited the courthouse while running for governor of Texas for a publicity event. An impetuous Connolly lifted the embalmed creature by its hind leg, which abruptly <sighs> detached. Oh, no! He ripped Leave his fucking alone. leg off. I know. Don't and touch I... old Rip. It's his, it's his eternal rest. <laughs> well, he lived Rip true to his ripped. name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he lived true to it. his name. <laughs> I got it. He did. In 1972, Rip's body was stolen again. Soon after, the city of Eastland claimed they had somehow found the stolen specimen and returned the object to exhibition. However, museum visitors noted the recovered toad now inexplicably had four feet, while the original specimen only had three feet because of the mm -hmm. earlier incident with John Connolly. Mm -hmm. So it was suddenly intact again. They didn't find the, mm -hmm. they didn't find old Rip. They got a new oh. one. <gasps> yeah. In 1976, an anonymous letter was sent to newspapers claiming the original three-footed specimen was still in the thief's possession, and the city of Eastland had replaced the original specimen with a fake. It's a conspiracy that runs all the way to the top. I can't with this. <laughs> Angry that the city of Eastland was building its future around a dried up horned frog, the letter writer offered to pay $5,000 to anyone who could prove that the toad in the courthouse was truly old Rip. So. Boy's house is in a basement with red strings on a wall, smoking cigarettes. Yep. Like, <laughs> Pepe Sylvia, Pepe <laughs> Sylvia. <laughs> it is Boy's house. <laughs> I'm on to something. I got boxes full of Pepe. <laughs> okay, this is the weirdest part to me. This was uh, his legacy. In 1955, okay. <laughs> Such a Looney, word to use for a Looney Tunes legacy. Looney Tunes writer Michael Maltese was inspired by the story of Old Rip to write an animated theatrical short entitled One Froggy Evening. In the cartoon, a construction worker demolishing a building finds an 1892 time capsule inside a cornerstone. The capsule contains a living frog retroactively named Michigan J. Frog uh, okay. years later, which is able to sing songs such as Hello, My Baby. So it's the Looney Tunes oh, so frog. With the the WB, it's the WB frog. It's as the well? WB frog. That's based on old Rip. Get the hell yeah. out of here. No, I won't. Are you shook? Because I, I am. I am so shook. Yeah. Look at where things come from. This frog is embedded in the American culture somehow, and it never knew. And yet Old he's rip. a lizard, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And yet he was frog. never a frog. But he is very regal. He, had, he lived a life. You know, he got you know he, he was a satin lined casket, so that makes the top hat and the cane. He was make, high, make met the president. Sense. He met and the he president. was unearthed yeah. unearthed in the Jazz Age, so the the, these Tin Pan Alley songs make sense. Wow. The WB frog. Yeah. I can't. It goes so deep. It goes so <sighs> deep. So old Rip's story was told in the 2005 doc or 2004 documentary short Toad Spotting, The Legend of Old Rip. <laughs> okay. So that wasn't really morbid, but it does kind it. of relate to cheating death. Yep. It was yeah, weird as hell and I loved it. It was and he's out there weird somewhere as still. hell. 
he is. He's out there somewhere with three <laughs> legs because Somebody of fucking John it. Connolly. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal turd. the old rip. National. We need we need we need Nicholas Cage on this. We need a Bring National back Treasure old Five. Rip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna steal, old rip. I'm gonna steal old rip. <laughs> yeah, we need this. We need. <laughs> I'm, gonna I'm gonna steal, steal old, rip. old rip. I'm gonna steal old rip. <laughs> <laughs> okay i just have my obituary area left and this is um it's not personal to me i mean all obituaries are personal but i have a little like personal backstory and not not related to me again but okay a coven member sent this in so here is that person's email and this is coming from another person named hannah different hannah oh so hannah's email reads quote I never imagined that one day I'd be sitting in my parents' living room trying to explain to them that I'm a frequent listener of a true crime comedy podcast, but I also never imagined I'd be writing an obituary for my dead sister either. Oh, Oh my God. As my my parent... Don't worry, it's not all that. I mean, it's sad, of course, but... Mm -hmm. As my parents, remaining siblings, and I were working on the draft of the obituary, the whole thing started to sound so bland and boilerplate a listicle of a life instead of an abo- an, instead of an embodiment of it. I finally played the end of a few Coroner Corner episodes for them, and it completely shifted the mood. Everyone was cracking up and starting to think of memorable and funny anecdotes to add. Aww. All that to say, I just want to thank you for bringing joy and inspiration to a difficult moment, and I have to thank Amanda, too, because I had to go ahead and play a full gack after we went through the obits. I wasn't sure how it would play, but it was priceless to see my 14-year-old sister's disgusted face at half of the coven confessions. <laughs> and it was hilarious when my dad was dying at the rhinestone ball gag story. <laughs> <laughs> like a rhinestone ball gag. <laughs> okay, so that, that is... That warms my heart. So now I'm going to read to you the uh, revised obituary for Hannah's sister. So okay. here we go. Violet Letty Rose Fernandez, named Isaac James at birth. So she's trans. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Uh, 20, 25 years old, found peace as she passed away at home on December 24th, 2023. So qu- quite recently. Yeah. Letty's life will be celebrated at College Park Baptist Church in Greensboro, North Carolina on January 6, 2024 at 11 a.m. She was born on September 28, 1998 at Paradise in Paradise, California to Adam Elliott and Laura Marie Smith. Auspicious as being born in Paradise may sound, her mother is often quoted as saying, quote, it was by far the most difficult <laughs> <laughs> from her, her post-labor shits, I'm sure. Yeah. Were compacted <laughs> from that point on she took it upon herself to continue to challenge all of us in ways we uh, that only later would we realize were exactly what we needed letty spent the first seven years of her life living in chico california after she moved with her family to greensboro north carolina in chico she loved to play outside especially in the woods at her grandparents house with her siblings building forts making rose water potions yes mm. fashioning tools and weapons out of six yes and climbing the neighbor's trees to eat the ripening kumquats. Hell yeah. While in Chico, she started playing baseball and later added other sports in middle and high school, such as cross country and wrestling. On and off the mat, she was one slippery motherfucker. Huh. She also swam on the neighborhood swim team along with her older sister, both of whom hated nearly every minute of it. So naturally, during the summer, she hung out at Hamilton Lakes Pool, at the Hamilton Lakes Pool, where she began her first job as a lifeguard. While not called on to rescue anyone in her years as a lifeguard at Hamilton Lakes or the Bryan YMCA, she had many many years earlier saved the life of her younger brother, Noah, who had fallen into the koi pond at their grandparents' house. There it is. It was one of many debts that (laughs) Noah owes his older sister, which he will continue trying to repay even though she's passed on. Also, that reminds me of that scene in The Office when they have the security camera. Yeah, I love it. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) In middle school, she learned to play the trumpet and continued to play in high school, participating in marching and jazz band. Continuing as the protective older sister that she was, she also prayed over her brother Aaron's baptism. Of course, in true Letty fashion, after coming home from a summer youth trip, she promptly launched her car off a hill in Hamilton Lakes with the worship leader's daughter in it. Oh, their God, family it sounds like me. Their family <laughs> left town shortly thereafter. Oh, my God. Good for you. 
<laughs> Letty was a student in the Spanish immersion program and graduated from Grimsley High School on June 11th, 2017. On a parenthetical note, in November of 2018, when Letty had just turned 20, Paradise, California, her birthplace, burned down. <gasps> Coincidence? We think not. Yeah. <laughs> she went on. She went on to study chemistry at UNC Greensboro and graduated May 6, 2022. Her undergraduate advisor is remembered as saying she wasn't a memorable student until after she took a year off for COVID and that when she came back, quote, she was a different person. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> she came back hard. Well, I think that might be when she tr- when she transitioned. transitioned. Oh, that's <laughs> that's what I took that to mean. She Could was be. a completely different person. A little Didn't, humor. Wasn't, I like that. Wasn't yeah, very yeah. memorable until she came back a different person. I love it. <laughs> After applying herself diligently during her senior year at UNCG, the ever mercurial Violet continued her academic endeavors at the Joint School of Nanoscience and Nanoengineering. Damn. What? Where wow. she was a second year student in the nanoengineering PhD program at the time of her death. Letty had creative ambitions that were unfortunately underexpressed, even though she made an effort to practice and produce. She wrote down lyrics, poems, and thoughts. She continued to play the trumpet after high school, although with less frequency. She played the drums poorly and with little inhibition. Yes. <laughs> she was not shy about trying and struggling and even failing. Her most burgeoning creative exploit was cooking and baking, for which she had a natural flair. She could adjust recipes intuitively and cook with seemingly careless effort, producing ribs that her roommates still claim were the best they'd ever had. Yum. As a result, oh, yeah, that sounds so good. As a result, hosting dinner parties became a passion of hers. Sadly, she suffered a traumatic life event that brought about a severe and complex mental illness on February 20th, 2023, and this is what ultimately took her life. She was not her illness, yet through her illness, she taught us what it means to love unconditionally, to fight to be present, and that mistakes should not stir shame or condemnation, but a renewed sense of shared responsibility. Mm. That's so sweet. Wow. That's beautiful. As a family, we were team Letty until her last breath. Even in her suffering, when you shared your life with her, she would say, I love that for you. (laughs) (laughs) She is survived by her parents, siblings, Hannah, Aaron, his wife, Soma, Noah, Maya, and Adrian, as well as her grandparents, Jim and Robin Smith, Helen Malone, Naomi Fernandez, and her partner, Jillian, her bromance for the ages, Seth. As well as many close friends and family who will love and miss who love her and will miss her every day. She is preceded in death by her white 19, 1998 Honda Accord, deceased <laughs> June 29th, 2016, and a gray 2009 Honda Civic, deceased December 8th, 2023. <laughs> Please, instead of sending flowers, donate to NAMI Guilford or an LGBTQIA plus affirming organization of your choice. Also, we would love for you to share memories and stories of Letty or Isaac or Violet with us in writing. This will help keep her memory alive and remember her fully. For those planning on attending the memorial service in honor of her spirit, bright colors are encouraged and Violet is her favorite color. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. That's so sweet. That's a really beautiful a That's a hell of a tribute. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Yeah. I just love the- so sorry for their loss. So sorry for for the loss. Letty sounds like an incredible human being. Mm -hmm. Um, But thank you, Hannah, for sending that in. Thank you also for rewriting that obituary because this just brings her to life so much Mm -hmm. better than your typical obits. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, let that be an inspiration for next time you have to write an obituary. (laughs) Yeah. Keep it light. Keep it fun. You know, put the person that, you know, it doesn't have to. Yeah. It doesn't have to be so somber. You know, like they're not going to read it. Yeah, they'll <laughs> crack. <laughs> yeah, crack some exactly. jokes. Have, have a good time about it. Yeah, I love that. about like yeah. writing my grandma's obit. I was like, no, I'm telling it like it is. She's not gonna fucking read it. She can't get mad at me about it. Like, oh, what are you gonna do? Haunt me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish it'd be amazing if I had a ghost. It's what I have is just a frogger. <laughs> I wish it was a anyway. Ghost. Great okay. job on coroner corner. Great job on Coven Confessions, Alvin. Alvin, thank you. That was crazy. A lot of um, yeah, a lot of scatological stuff. <laughs> I feel like I just walked into an episode of That's So Raven. 
a special guest. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Tell them where they can find you, Alvin. Plug your shit. I um, co-host a podcast called Affirmative Murder with my friend Fran and co-host Fran. He is a real person. Sometimes people don't believe me, but he is real. He's a very real person and he exists. I believe you. I don't believe it. As a matter of fact, I've if never you don't met believe, Fran. Well, you, you have to believe. You got to clap three times. You got to spin around. If you really, yeah. I believe. I believe in Fran. <laughs> yeah, it's like Peter Pan. Say Fran three times in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you if you if you are skeptical, we're doing a live show in Portland, Oregon, on uh, May the third at the Ooh. Growler Guys uh, with our good friend and amazing podcaster Madison McGee. Um, you know, tickets are available if you would like to come and uh, see a live show. We're going to talk about. Um, conspiracy theories and have a yes. fun, silly time um, up oh there in the God. Pacific Northwest. So uh, we'd love to have anybody who's around that area come through and have a good time. Uh, but yes, yeah, Affirmative yeah. Murder every Thursday. We do uh, listener emails on Monday. So if you are listening to our podcast and you want to send in some crazy stories, they don't have to be about poop or dead dogs. Um, but it, it, <laughs> well, whatever you have, be. if they if they end up being about that, we'd love Alvin to hear it. Because Alvin loves those topics. Yes, those are my, two, of my, <laughs> two of my faves. That's his fave. Along with men and men's rights. Men's rights. Yeah, yeah, along with men's rights. Because really, in society, if we got to be honest about it, men just aren't getting their just due these days, and it's not fair. <laughs> um, if you if you look up if you look up my TikTok, she man woman haters club, I get more <laughs> in depth into these topics. I don't. I'm not, I'm not going to use their platform to do it. But if you want to really follow yep. my lore, you can uh, follow mm -hmm. me on TikTok, and we can really get into yeah. it. You know, and talk the real talk. Yes. Yeah. Men. Uh, let us know if they have Dunkin' Donuts in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Keep an eye out. Good donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. Keep an eye out for Dunkin' Donuts. I'll keep an eye out. Yeah. Yeah, we know yeah. about voodoo donut, whatever. Keep an eye out for Duncan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Answer I will, our, I will, our burning I will keep an question. Eye out. <laughs> All right. Well, thank, thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Yeah. Anytime. You're love the you guys. best. Fantastic. I love you guys so much. All right. Thanks, Alvin. And thank you for listening. And we will see you next month. Bye bye. Thanks for listening to Gossip at the Corpse Cart presented by Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Danielle Sylvan. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Editing by Jonathan Camp. Our production manager is Andrea Gardner. For photos and sources, check out our blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can follow us on all the socials at Wine and Crime Pod. If you have funny headlines, coven confessions, or obituaries to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple. It is the best way to spread the word. If you'd like to show your support and get access to all sorts of wine-fueled bonus content, visit our Patreon page. Cheers! <laughs>